आचरण फोन मध्य तो युवा रजो में होता था ना हाँ अरे यार मैं जरा जवाब दे तो तेंद्र अम्मी की अचानक बर्ताव तारी कोटर अचानक अम्मी कड़ी है तो जब बंदा मालूम आधे काला का बारह दिन ना होता था ना वहाँ बारह दिन ना आचरण दूर नरों ने जरा जवाब दे तो तेंद्र हम तो बर्ताव करते हो सही ही मारा थोड़ो अंदर
हेलो 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 ये तो प्रॉब्लम है इतने बोल तो सर तिका बोलते Good morning to all. I am Chandan Ashok Sonkamre, faculty of Department of English, City Kirtis College, Akkal Court. Formally welcome you in Kullish Lok, Ahila Devi, Kolkar Solapur University, Solapur, sponsored Department of English. CB Kirgiz, Bashesha Science, Raja Vijay Singh Commerce, and Raja J.C. Arts College, Akkal Court. Today has organized a national level e-seminar on new curriculum of English compulsory PA and PhD in years. On this auspicious occasion, I would like to invite respected SM Paranjapi Madam, HOD of English Department to welcome and give introductions of today's A very good morning. In the beginning, I would like to pray Lord Ganesh touch feet of my Sadhguru and Sri Swami Samad to enlighten us with all limitless knowledge. Honorable invitees, distinguished guests, honorable dignitaries, we are here joined today because Punyashlok Ahila Devi Holkar Solapur University, Solapur, sponsored Department of English, C.B. Khedgi College, Akkal Kot, organized national level e-seminar on new curriculum of English compulsory of BA3 and BSc3. On this auspicious festive occasion, I take here the opportunity to welcome Vice Chancellor, PAS Solapur University, Solapur, Dr. Nanalini Fodanvis, Madam, Provisi, Dr. Vibhi Patil, Sir, and Registrar, Professor Dr. S.K. Pawar, Sir, BYS Chairman, Annie John, Madam, and all BOS members. 
it gives me immense pleasure to welcome shri shivsharan ji khedgi sahib chairman akalkot education society akalkot vice chairman shri ashok ji harkur sahib and secretary shri dharne sahib a glad welcome to professor basavraj ji donu sir dean school of humanities and languages director of academic and registrar central university karnataka kalburgi i would like to welcome here all the experts and acclaimed personalities who are going to share their scholarly knowledge with us here i extend my hearty welcome to all delegates participants professors head of the departments teachers and of course students for their gracious presence now moving on to the introduction of e seminar the objective behind organization of this e seminar is to facilitate the platform and bring all for the discussion of new curriculum and to share the new knowledge and scholarly ideas here this e seminar is providing us the platform where experts and professionals have come together for sharing of their profound knowledge about language and english language and literature i hope professor dr anni john ma'am would like to uh, would take us to uh, the domain of poetry beyond the poetry and life she would take us to a special comprehensible level professor dr m p joshi dr mote sir dr suryamushi sir all will take us definitely uh, towards such level that will help us while studying our topics definitely they will throw light upon their topics with research and their own experiments i am optimistic that all participants will acquire new knowledge and experience new skills 21st century skills and will be definitely benefited in closing in short it will be definitely benefited to us i am very much thankful to pa solapur university solapur for sanctioning of this seminar and giving us chance chance of hosting it i wish here all delegates participants and students a fruitful seminar and intellectual treat thank you very much thank you very much madam for welcoming and introducing today's e seminar now i would like to invite respected jr birajdar madam hod department of physics to give introductions of today's chief guest and inaugurator of e seminar respected jr birajdar madam good morning it's my great pleasure to introduce our chief guest professor basavraj ji donu professor basavraj ji donu is currently dean in school of humanities and languages and director of academics and registrar central university of karnataka kalburgi he obtained his phd in english in 2011 from karnataka university dharwad on the poetry of g m hopkins and basavanna a comparative study and he also completed his phd in kannada in 
from Kannada University Hampi on Kannada drama and realism. He has 26 years of teaching and research experience. He has been associated with various universities in Karnataka and Amarakantaka, Madhya Pradesh. Five students have obtained PhD degree and eight students completed MPhil under ABLE guidance. He was member of Executive Council of Central University of Karnataka and International School of Dravidian Linguistics, Kerala. He has completed major and minor research projects. He has published storybooks, novels, books on criticism, books on dramas, etc. He has published many research articles in national, international conferences and reputed journals. His many books are prescribed in the syllabus of different UG and PG classes as texts. He has been invited in many functions, seminars, and conferences as an invited guest or keynote speaker. He has organized many seminars and workshops. He has participated in talk shows, book review programs, in programs broadcasted by Air India Radio and Doordarshan. He visited England and attended three days international conference and presented a paper. He also visited Trinity College, King's College and Oxford University. He received Amma Award from Matushri Mahadevamma Nagappa Munnuru Foundation Sedam Karnataka for the book Nota Nilu, Volume 1 in 2016. He also received Partha Sarathi Panamushri National Award from Kannada Sahitya Pradesh Bangalore in 2018 for his contribution to the development of Kannada language and literature. Gulbarga University Kalburgi conferred Rajotsav Award on Kannagala Baru, a collection of poems in 2019. We are fortunate to have such a dynamic personality to guide us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for given wonderful introductions of today's chief guest and inaugurator. It is pride privilege me for to request inaugurator of today's e seminar, Professor Basaraj Dunur, Registrar Central University of Karnataka, Kalburgi, to give address on importance of communication skill in 21st century. Respected Professor Basaraj Dunur, sir. <laughs> Good morning to you. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. To you, I am very happy to symbolically inaugurate one day national level e seminar on new curriculum of English compulsory BA, BSc career, organized by C.V. Khedagi Basveshwar College, Raja Vijay Singh Commerce and Raja Jay Singh Arts College, Akal Kot, Solapur District, Maharashtra. Mr. V.Z. Andhare, in charge principal of uh, CB Kedgi College, Akhil Kot. Uh, I am KD uh, from the Department of English. Then uh, Mrs. S.M. Pranjape, HOD Department of uh, English. Mrs. J.P. Biradar, J.R. Biradar, head the Department of Physics. And uh, Samadhan Mane, I could see his face, my old friend, and uh, all my colleagues of uh, these um, institutes, 
uh, fellow teachers, researchers, students, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as I said, I'm very happy to notionally or symbolically inaugurate this one day uh, e seminar. I thank the organizers for uh, having invited me for this one day national seminar and uh, share my thoughts and ideas with you about communication skills in the 21st century. I thank Mrs. Uh, J.R. Viradar for uh, mm, speaking nice words about me. I must admit that I don't deserve uh, this appreciation. So I'll be talking about uh, communication skills for about 20 to 25 minutes. I asked the organizers how much time do I have. Uh, have. OK, uh, in case of any network issue, somebody should inform me. <clears throat> yes. Audience, which he, which consists. I don't say that I have something new to tell you about the importance and significance of communication. Certainly, I have my own experiences, my own understanding of uh, communication, which I can share with you for about uh, 22, 25 uh, minutes. I will not, I shall not. Uh, I shall not give uh, a very scholarly lecture on uh, the theme of communication. I shall not get into theories of communication. I shall not refer to people who have worked in the field of uh, uh, communication skills. I'll be only talking to you, or rather I'll be sharing with you my experiences my own experiences and my own understanding as a teacher of English. I have been teaching English for the last, um, you know, for, for, the more, for more than two decades, almost 20, 23, 24 years. Although I'm working as director and uh, dean today, but I have not stopped teaching. teaching. I do English classes even today. And uh, in my classes, what I do is I try to communicate to my students. Communication has been an important, an important, a very significant phenomenon. We talk about communication skills. We know language, we know grammar, but why do we fail to emerge as very effective, powerful communicators? Communication, you can give a lecture on communication, but if you want to become an effective communicator, you will have to struggle. I, will, I shall have to struggle a lot. It's a journey, it's a lifetime journey. You will have to experiment. You will have to experiment every day with your own communication skills. Theories and books, lectures of this kind will not make students better communicators. Otherwise, I can read a book and, uh, <laughs> and, and become a good communicator. No, there are no books to train us in communication. They give information about communication. There are no books to train you to become parliamentarians. No. You will have to operate in a in a bigger area. You will have to operate in a bigger area. So, 
what I should do to improve my communication skills is the subject matter of my presentation today. I don't give you details about the communication skills. You all know that uh, there are three important communication skills and you know about verbal, non-verbal communication, you know theories, okay, coding, decoding, etc., etc. I don't want to get into these details. I assume that you all know about it. This is very basic and fundamental. Every teacher of English and every student of English or every teacher, um, you know, whether he teaches English or physics or chemistry, you know the importance and significance of communication. Now, <clears throat> when students come to me, when my students come to me and ask me a question, sir, what should I do? What should we do to improve our communication? People come to me, students come to me, sir, my writing is very bad. I can't write, I can't write, you know, proper or correct English sentences. Sir, I cannot speak properly. What I should do? You know, these are very important questions. These are very fundamental questions. And these are our major concerns as teachers. First of all, I should think about improving my own language skills. How should I improve my writing skills? How should I improve my speaking skills? Right. So my answer to these questions of my students is, the more you speak, the better you speak. You know? The more you speak, the better you speak. In an, in, in, in an, in an academic year, you don't speak 10 sentences in English. How can you become an effective speaker in English? Right. And we teachers, when we when I teach a text in my classroom, I use English. Once I come out of the classroom, I don't use English at all. Isn't it? So what should we do? We should keep, we should, we should you know, speak continuously, non-stop. I give you one classic example. Mahatma Gandhi, at the end of his political career, became one of the most powerful, effective speakers at the global level. We all know it, how powerful Gandhi, Gandhi, Gandhi's speech used to be. But what was Gandhi? You know, you know, when when he came to India, he, as as a lawyer, he was not uh, he was not very successful. You know, he 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 couldn't argue well in the in the courts. And when he came to India, people in Delhi received him at the court, and uh, they requested him to speak. And Gandhi was not able to speak. Gandhi said, "I'm sorry, I cannot speak." Then he was taken to a, an auditorium where he was again asked to speak and Gandhi said, I'm sorry, I cannot speak. Then, sir, uh, can you please, um, you know, write down your speech and read it out. Gandhi was not able to read out his own written speech. And then when he was made to speak, he almost fainted. He almost fainted. He fell unconscious. Then Gandhi emerged as the most successful successful speaker in the world, what he must have done? Oh, you know, we, we must ask this question. What Gandhi must have done? What Gandhi should have done? He must have practiced. He must have practiced and he should have practiced. A man who is not able to utter a single sentence, you know, at, 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 at some point in time, was able to become the most powerful, fearful, terrible, effective speaker at the global level. So, this is my experience. This is my experience. As a student, I never spoke in my classes at all. One day I realized that I must improve my communication skills. I should begin to speak. I acquired. I acquired proficiency and I think I'm, uh, I'm happy with my um, uh, with my language skills. 
what I'm trying to say is, since I'm addressing students, my advice to all the students who have gathered here, who have attended, who are attending this talk online, is to practice. You know, the more you speak, the better you speak. Remember what uh, Francis Bacon said in one of his uh, short essays, practice, make it a full man. Reading, reading is essential. Writing is also essential. Practice, make it a full man. You become a full man, a complete man. Purna manusha. You become purna, sampurna manusha. You become a complete man, a full man, only when you practice. Practice makes you perfect. If you want to, you know, um, if you want to be perfect in what in what you do, you should practice. Nothing short of, you know, hard work. Practice means hard work. Only with hard work, dedication, sincerity, commitment, you can become a good communicator. Right? Communicator means the people involved in the act of communication. People involved in the act of communication are communicators. This is, please remember this. Please remember this. And second, <clears throat> what is very important in, uh, in the act of communication? What is very important in the act of conversation is you should be able to listen to the speaker properly. Our problem is we don't have time, patience to listen to people. I can react and respond only after listening to what somebody is, is, is speaking, what somebody is saying. Before he finishes saying what he wants to say, I react. So I... Uh, there is a problem with my response. There is a problem with my reaction. What should I do? I should first become a listener. The problem with a lot of people in India today is, is they are not able to, they are not good listeners. Please pay attention to what your teacher is saying in the classroom. If you want to understand my speech today, you should first listen to me. Don't have anything in mind. Don't have any inhibition. Don't have any, any illusion in your mind. Just you, you should lend your ears. You should lend your ears to the people speaking, people talking, people lecturing. Then you understand. So this is very, very important in any speech act, in any communication act, or in any conversation act. Please listen to people properly. Then, yes, second question is, my students also come to me and ask me, sir, I'm not able to write properly. Every sentence that I write has some error in it. What should I do? How can I improve my writing skills? What should I do, you know, to write correct English, effective English? I say, forget correct English. Definitely forget effective English. Your aim should be to write simple sentences in English. Very, very simple. You know, I don't want to write compound or complex sentences. Simple sentences. Subject, verb, object. I go home like that. So why, why our students are not able to write correct sentences? When I cannot write correct sentences, how can I write effective sentences? Writing is a very, 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 very tough task. Problem with our students is they write only one. If it is an annual system, they write just once in a year. If it is a semester system, they write two times, twice a year. If you write just two times in a year, how can you become a writer? You cannot become a writer. It is impossible. As I said, writing is a very, very tough task. Writing is a very, very difficult task. Then what should you do? What should I do? Practice writing. The, the second sutra is, sutra is 
the second formula is the more you write, the better you write. If you want to write better, you write more. Keep, keep on writing from morning till evening. Just keep on writing. Write and fill it off. Write and fill it off. I started writing almost three decades ago. If I write a story or an essay or a small piece of writing today, then I will rewrite it at least four times. With the 30 years of experience as a writer, I, you know, my first attempt, I will not, I will not, I will not send it. I will not send my writing to the press unless I change it, I edit it, I modify it, I rewrite it for at least five to six times. I write columns for a kind of newspaper every week. I write and rewrite at least seven to eight times. So if, if, if you want to become a good writer, an effective writer, a thoughtful writer, then you will have to work hard, proportionately. Success does not come automatically. Success never comes automatically to anybody. There is, there is nothing like born genius, right? We have to work, work and work very hard. It all depends upon your own hard work, your sincerity, your commitment, and your politics does not work in academics. Politics does not work academic, in, in academics. Only your caliber, your knowledge, your wisdom, your experience, your sincerity, your hard work, your commitment, your vision, your dream, dream they come to your rescue. And students, you know, you are, you are all still very young, and you have a lot of time, you, you have a lot of, uh, you, know, you, you need to do a lot of things in your life. So you must be ready, work hard. If you want to speak, if you want, you, if your aim is to become a very effective, powerful English teacher, then you will have to start working very hard. So the more you write, the better you write. The more you speak, the better you speak. And some students come and tell me, sir, you know, I read, but I don't understand. There are students who read uh, a full length novel. And at the end, uh, after reading the novel, they don't even remember the characters. They don't remember characters. They don't remember situations. And they, they, they remember nothing. Why? Why you, you forget everything you read is also a question. Reading is also an art. Writing is an art. Speaking is an art. Writing is, a, a, a reading is also an, an art. Because you don't read regularly. Make it a point, yes. I should not sleep. I should not go to bed unless I read 50 pages a day. Definitely, you know, you improve your reading skill. You improve your reading skill. You read fast, you read, you read fast, you read quickly, and you understand. You understand what you read. Right? And about uh, when it comes to listening, listen to, as I, I, as I said in the beginning, listen to your teacher. Listen to your teachers, listen to speakers, and also listen to your own friends. The reason why I fail to understand what my friend is trying to say to me is because I'm not interested in him. You know? In India, see, husband and wife, you know, after living together for 30, 40 years, and when they become old, then they complain against each other. Husband tells wife, you have never understood me at all. And wife also tells her husband, uh, you know, my dear old man, you have never understood me. So also lovers, so also friends, so also teachers and students. Why we don't understand each other? Because we have not communicated properly with each other. Communication has broken down. Communication breaks regularly 
because you are interested in yourself i am interested in myself now i am talking to you only god knows whether you are listening to me or not whether you are interested in uh, what i am trying to say to you or not who knows only god knows if you are interested in me then you can understand me. and again when you communicate please remember another two three things you should be very 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 sympathetic in your conversation you should be very kind and compassionate if you are very critical very negative you, you can't communicate or you cannot understand the feeling feelings of the other person so please be positive encouraging when you when you listen or when you when you communicate you should have empathy for others sympathy and empathy for others and uh, good communication or communication skills involve as i said listening speaking observing and empathizing But empathy is very important you don't become a poet you don't become a teacher if you want to become a good teacher you should have what we call empathy right you should understand the problems of your students the feelings of your students my teacher professor kirtanath kurtkovi he worked of course in gujarat very great tata critic and professor of english who is no more he used to say to me was a dodo when you meet your students or when the students come to meet you first ask them how they are how are you ask this question don't tell them don't start you know uh, lecturing on shakespeare today don't talk about academics and research you are a human being and he is also a human being you ask him or her yes my dear student how are you then he will feel happy then he will come out and he will speak what he wants to speak and in communication in the act of communication we should have this human bond human relationship you can't be very 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 mechanical we are not robots we are not machines we are humans we should have human human sensitivity human tenderness you know i should be very tender very humane very sensitive in my approach and attitude then i become a good communicator a good teacher so how can you connect to your students you can't just connect to their minds you should connect to their hearts their feelings their emotions then you know a bond is established a relationship is established there is an understanding what you call you know uh, you you come together when you come together that 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 coming together is very very important in in in, in all forms of communication so i should try to go very close to close to my students whether you are speaking face to face whether whether you are uh, speaking over phone conversing uh, through or you know, over phone or you are uh, digital communications you are using digital communications like uh, email and social media you are using so any mode of communication in in any mode of communication in any act of communication you have to be very sincere committed and uh, and you should be very tender these are very very uh, important um, now i can speak for another 5 uh, minutes and i call it day uh, because the organizers have uh, given me only 25 to 30 minutes i think i have already spoken for 25 minutes i can speak for another 5 minutes and when i meet you next time i can give one hour lecture on uh, on communication or on uh, some in, in topic of uh, literary importance okay <clears throat> so only when you become a good your first aim is to become a communicator simple communicator you should be able to communicate your ideas your thoughts to your fellow beings to your students to your friends to your fellow beings then you try to become good communicator then your aim should be to become an effective communicator everybody cannot become an effective communicator okay 
and uh, I, I i i recommend uh, uh, shakespeare's julius caesar to all the students of the department of english all all students in general you know if you please read uh, the, uh, the 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 dialogues especially the dialogues spoken by uh, authored by um, you know mark antony romans countrymen like that you know let me your ears i came to i came to very caesar not to praise him so please read that dialogue so active listening is very very important and friendliness friendliness you know even when you are teaching um, in your classroom you have to have this friendliness you know try to be a friend to your uh, students and uh, uh, the characteristics of friendliness are honesty kindness and trust etc if you are honest if you are uh, kind if you are honest then that will foster that will nurture uh, trust and understanding confidence confidence uh, this is something which is missing in our uh, in, in a large number of our students across india they don't have confidence okay develop confidence how confidence and develop it so you will have confidence only when you work hard right if you have ideas to communicate if you have ideas and also language then you communicate better if you don't have ideas even if you have language you can't communicate and you know communication skills you don't have ideas you become very bad communicator so ideas and you will have to translate ideas in the form of you know language words words or symbols okay language is basically a symbol it is a set of symbols to represent you know ideas notions etc etc so that confidence students have to improve their confidence i tell you how can you can you can ask me a question sir how how should i improve my confidence it is possible it is possible no teacher will do it no professor can do it for you you have to be you have to develop yourself nobody will save you remember nobody will protect you nobody will make you a perfect man as a koi cheez nahi hai duniya mein you will have to develop your own confidence work hard Read, read a lot. Listen to people carefully. Observe the, you know, nature. You know, uh, you, 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 you hardly come out. You don't look at the sky. How can you write, uh, write about the sky, the sun, the moon, the stars, the wind, the trees, the river, the ocean? And you, you may not see your house properly. You, you, you can't describe your own house. The room in which you are living, you are not able to describe it. Okay. and the bus by which you go to college every day you can't describe it you don't remember the face of your own teacher your friends why why because you don't observe <laughs> only a keen observer a perfect observer can describe things properly otherwise you cannot describe and in any speech act you will have to give and take you know feedback is very important feedback when i'm no i don't see your faces if it were in an auditorium i can easily make out whether you are you whether you like my speech or not whether i am boring you whether whether I, whether it is very interesting i can definitely make out from your faces from your eyes from your gestures etc etc and when you communicate uh, you, you it's it's all verbal 90% of our communication is verbal you know only facial gestures you know eye uh, movement Oh, you know movement of your hands using space on the you know on the stage etc they are all non verbal they also contribute to communication they will make they will contribute to the effective communication if we can look into the eyes of the people and speak then you will you, you, you will reach them quickly you can appeal to them that's very important eye to eye uh, contact is also very important empathy i said that's very important you know you have to have you have to you have to be you, have, you, you you must have patience to listen to others okay and you be sympathetic to them you know try to be interested in their in their problems somebody comes to you to explain his problem sir i have this problem my health is not okay i have lost this you have sympathy listen to them oh uh, this is the case right 
and you should uh, also respect the other. And uh, responsiveness is also very, very uh, uh, important. And um, there are deep communication uh, skills, right? So, um, having said this, uh, let me conclude my speech with a couple of observations. Um, if I quickly, uh, uh, let me summarize what I have uh, spoken for the last 22, 25 minutes, my dear friends. Whether uh, it is 20th century or 21st century, it doesn't matter. Unless you are a good communicator, you cannot share your ideas and thoughts. If you want to become a successful businessman, you have to acquire communication skills. If you want to become a politician, you will have to convince people. You will have to convince people about your ideas, your thoughts, your plans, and your vision. Right? If you want to become a good public speaker, if you want to become an artist, if you want to become an effective teacher in the classroom, you will have to work hard. Today, if you have communication skills, this is going, I have come to the last part of my presentation. Today, in 21st century, with the communication skills, you can mint money. Now, I am earning 2.5 lakhs per month for the job that I am doing in Central Institute Karnataka. If I leave this job and uh, and and uh, uh, and join any corporate world, with my skills, I can earn 20 lakhs per month. It's possible. It's possible. So, um, you know, you will have to develop your communication skills. You know, if you are able to convince people, if you are able to sell your ideas, your thoughts, your goods, if you are able, if you are able to convince people for investment, you have a project and you need funds, and go, go to the funding agency, speak to them, submit a proposal, then you get a lot of a lot of funds. It's all possible when you acquire when you acquire proficiency in the communication skills. And uh, as I said in the beginning of my uh, inaugural presentation today, that with the sincerity, honest commitment, hard work, sacrifices, a man who is very humble, very simple, and who is incapable of uttering, uh, you know, only, uh, uh, you know, even four good sentences in English, will be able to become an effective speaker, very powerful speaker, powerful writer at the end of the day. It's all possible. Nothing is impossible for a human being. Nothing is impossible for a human being. Man has a lot of uh, inbuilt resources in him. He has intellectual capabilities and power. He has intellectual power, psychological power, spiritual power, religious power, cultural power, linguistic power and also competence, linguistic competence, and all sorts of competence I have. Everything is inbuilt in my mind, in my heart, in my soul. So I should, I must depend upon myself and make the, makes the best use of the skills, gifts given by God and emerge into a very successful man. So these um, scattered remarks of mine, I call today, I thank the organizers for, uh, for having given me the opportunity to, uh, to participate in this one day uh, e-seminar and uh, meet my own friends, my old friends like Mane and others, and also <coughs> speak to very young um, uh, students community. Thank you so much. <laughs> Really a very uh, good speech, sir. Communication is at the heart of e-commerce and community. The key to holding problems and conflicts within an organization is to keep the channels of communication wide open. Sir has emphasized uh, on to learn effective communication. One has to do lifetime journey. The more you speak, the better you speak is a very easy solution. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your excellent guidance on the importance of communication skills in the 21st century. Thank you very much, sir.
अहिले देवी होलकर सोलापुर यूनिवर्सिटी सोलापुर स्पॉन्सर्ड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश सी बी खेड़ी बसवेश्वर साइंस राजा विजय सिंह कॉमर्स एंड राजा जय सिंह आर्ट्स कॉलेज अक्कलकोट ऑर्गनाइज नेशनल लेवल ई सेमिनार ऑन न्यू करिकुलम ऑफ इंग्लिश कंपलसरी बी एंड बी ए थर्ड इयर रिस्पेक्टेड चेयरमन श्री शिवसेनजी खेड़ी साहेब वाइस चेयरमन अशोक खारकूट सेक्रेटरी धरने साहेब इनाग्रेट ऑफ द ई सेमिनार ऑनरेबल प्रोफेसर बसवराज डोंडू रजिस्टर सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कर्नाटका कलबुर्गी एंड ऑल डिग्नेटर्स participant and students this is indeed the great pleasure for me to be with you here today on the occasion of the national level e seminar on new curriculum of english compulsory ba and bsc third year in this conjunction i would like to share my presidential remarks with you communication skills is the key to social integration communication enable people to share ideas feeling and contribute to discussion and debates in most of the case language poses of the barrier to the communication between different cultures or communications in 21st century the world has become a global community with the right training a poor communicator can also learn the skills of communicator in 21st century communication in connecting people in technological advancement there is a great shift in communication there has been the development of social media platforms where people engage in chats and exchange ideas and life experiences these platforms have changed the world into global community there are verbal and non verbal communication behavioral pat patterns confusion resolutions leadership team buildings constructive feedback etc the english teaching community is teaching all the above skills to their students moreover they teach poetry prose and grammar english compulsory is the subject which is in the syllabus of never about all courses across all programs that is ba bsc bca etc i wish here all participants and students a very useful experiences thank you thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir for your guidance now the inaugural sessions is going to an end i invite mr mt sunkamle sir for vote of thanks 
मिस्टर एम टी सुनका मेरे साथ A very good morning to all, everyone present here, join here. Punishlok Ahila Devi Holkar, Solapur University, Solapur, sponsored Department of English, Sibi Khirgiz College, Akkal Kot, organized the national E-level seminar on new curriculum of English BA and BSc third year. Uh, I, Professor Malli Garjun Sunkamle, take this opportunity to warmly thank all of you here. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Murunalini Padanis, Madam, Vice Chancellor, Unneshlok Ahila Devi Holkar, Solapur University, Solapur. Uh, I also thank to Professor V. B. Patil, Sir, Pro Vice Chancellor, Unneshlok Ahila Devi. Holkar Solapur University Solapur. I convey my sincere thanks to Professor S K Pawar Sir, Register, Punesh Lok Ahila Devi Holkar Solapur University Solapur. I thank you very much to the resource person, today's resource person, the chairman of BOS, Dr. Ani John Madam, and all the BOS members. I'm hurt. I'm mostly thankful to respected. Honorable Sri Shivsharanji Khedgi Sahib, the Chairman, Akkalkot Education Society, Akkalkot. My sincere thanks goes to Ashokji Harkut Sahib, Vice Chairman, Akkalkot Education Society, Akkalkot. I also thank to Sri Dharani Mama, uh, Secretary, Akkalkot Education Society, Akkalkot. And here, I convey my sincere thanks to today's inaugurator, uh, Dr. Basavraj Donur sir, the Registrar, Central University of Karnataka, Kalburgi. I most specially thanks for uh, Donur sir for giving us a very good talk on the communication. Again, I would like to uh, thank our respected principal, President of this inaugural function, Mr. Vijay Andares, uh, sir. And also I would like to thank uh, Professor Andares, sir, for giving us very better presidential speech. So I personally uh, thank to all the department, all the department who have participated in this uh, function. So most important, I would like to thank Dr. I am Khairadi sir, the conveyor of, conveyor of this e-seminar. Uh, I also thanks to the HOD of Department of English, Professor S.M. Parandepe madam, for setting this seminar very nicely. Uh, I also thank to all those who are directly or indirectly participating in this uh, seminar. And last, but not least, the most important, our special uh, thanks goes to all the students who are participating in this seminar. So with this, I conclude this uh, out of thanks here. Knowing all, we will meet in the first session soon. Thank you. OK, thank you, sir. Now the technical session is uh, start. I would like to request Dr. M R Guru Madam, HOD Department of Geology, to introduce us the scholarly personalities, respected Dr. Ani John Madam, Dio Chairman, Kundeshlok Aila Devi, Solapur University, Solapur, HOD of Department of English, AR Guru Maila Orist Mahadale, Solapur. Dr. Good morning to all of you. It's my great pleasure to introduce our eminent guest of this session, Professor Dr. Ali John Mann. Professor Dr. Ali John is a department A.R. Burla Mahira Varishan Harajale Solapur. He is the chairman of English since 2010. 
आय एम मेंबर ऑफ अकॅडमिक काउन्सिल ऑफ इंग्लिश लोक अहिल्याबाई होळकर सोलापूर युनिव्हर्सिटी सोलापूर ही इज अ रायटर पोएट एडिटर रिव्ह्युअर अँड पेन्स आर्टिकल ऑन स्पिरिच्युअलिटी मोरल्स अँड एथिक्स फॉर द न्यूज पेपर शी हॅज रिटर्न थर्टी फायव्ह बुक्स टू हर फेवरेट ॲज अन ऑथर अँड ॲज अन एडिटर presently she is working on three research books described as the graduate and post graduate level seven research scholars have completed their phd under her guidance she has been resource person at national and international conferences and seminars she is on board of editors for various peer reviewed interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary journals she has contributed chapters for various various books published about two research papers and member of board of studies of various autonomous colleges she is also recipient of the various awards thank you okay thank you very much madam we are very much eager to listen the scholarly sessions on teaching poetry so i invite professor any john madam for her guidance professor any john madam Thank you, sir. Uh, am I audible? Ah, yes, yes, madam, yes, madam. Okay. Uh, at the very outset, I would like to congratulate uh, the entire team of Kedgi's College for organizing this national seminar on uh, compulsory English textbook for BA third year and BSc third year. Um, I especially uh, thank Dr. Khairadi um, Paranjpai, madam. and all the other members of the english department for giving me this wonderful opportunity to bring my um, views to you regarding teaching poetry uh, so i'll just share my screen with you is the screen visible ha uh, yes madam yes madam just a minute okay madam so my topic um, uh, today is teaching poetry this year we have changed the textbook for compulsory english and we have uh, two separate books for two separate uh, semesters we have included tried to include some wonderful poems in this textbook now basically what are the objectives of teaching poetry now teaching poetry is basically to encourage the students to have a liking for poetry the poetry plays a very important part or a, you know a very vital role in teaching of english language it's very important that we introduce the poetic structures the devices or you can even say the different types of poems the different types of poetry to our students and as teachers it's very important that we develop different strategies for teaching poetry see everyone has their own style of teaching but when it comes to teaching poetry i think we should all develop some different methods of teaching so that we become so that the poem poetry becomes interesting and the students can comprehend what we teach now we are all very familiar with william wordsworth's definition of poetry where he says you know you need poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings recollected in tranquility now if you look at the oxford advanced learners dictionary it you know the expression is almost the same it says poetry is nothing but a literary work wherein our feelings or ideas or emotions 
are expressed but these feelings and emotions should be highly intense there should be a great intensity in these feelings and again they should be presented by using some kind of unique style distinctive rhythm now poetry has different values attached to it definitely there is creativity involved in poetry you need imagination you need inspiration poetry can also be fun if it is taught in a very enjoyable manner there is variety in it there is a scope to develop your vocabulary it helps you develop your phonic skills and also to appreciate different words different sound patterns there is so much you know so much to poetry what we talk about as the values of poems now when you teach poem why do we say teaching poetry is very important because poetry makes you think with your heart when you teach poems it actually activates our sensory organs you can say you know the audio the visual the smell the taste and the touch and that is why we say we use our five senses when we teach or when we try to you know savor in poetry there is also minute observation needed as a teacher because you're not just going to read the lines you're not going to just have a superficial reading but it's very important that you read in between the lines and try to comprehend something that is not comprehensible to others there may be a lot of you know figurative language or there can be even simple language but even in simple language the poet puts in his own style his own charm and it's very important that we identify this unique language because every poet has his own style basically every poetry you know it tries to give you the optimum effect with minimum words there may be very limited words but it tries to give you optimum maximum effect we should remember that every word in a poem contributes to the entire meaning of the poem it's not like you know only few lines contribute or only few words have something to say each and every word add meaning to the poem so when you talk about teaching poetry it's necessary as teachers we even need to activate these senses within our students we should talk to them about the importance of minute observation or talk to them about the importance of the language and tell them that poetry learning is different from prose learning now why do i read poetry we all read poetry because we have different reasons you know it says you know poetry means a lot of things to a lot of people or you can say poetry means to different people the uniqueness of a poem lies in its unwillingness to be defined or nailed down a poetry evokes different emotions in different people or different persons it can be love anger pain frustration loneliness the poetry also has this wonderful ability to surprise us to reveal something that is hidden to provide an insight to provide a vision and it also has the power to comprehend so why do i read poetry everybody has different answers to this question but basically i read poetry because it helps me to look at myself to look within myself and once i look at myself or once i look within myself it helps me to look beyond me there is a world which is beyond me and it's very important that i comprehend this world which is beyond me poetry also also helps to bring out those finer sensibilities from within me it helps to bring these fine sensibilities to the fore and in addition to that it also helps me polish my skills 
there is a difference in having skills and polishing those fine skills frequently because when you don't polish something it begins to rust so there is a need that you refine your skills each day and most important poetry helps me to interpret different things in different ways it helps me to look at things with a different perspective or it helps me to add a newer perspective to what is already there now as a teacher of poetry we need to focus on certain things while teaching the same for example we have different kinds of poems so it's very important that we tell our students the different types the different forms of poems and their pattern again there can be a number of literary devices that we use there can be the sound device as i said earlier poetry you know evokes all our senses our five senses so it's important that we help our students realize this focus upon the language as i said earlier every poet has got his own style and when we say style it means he's got his own language so it's important that we look at this language try to look at the title now normally the title is expanded in the poem or you can say the poetry is nothing but an expansion of the title and so you have to try to look at the title and help make the students realize how it is relevant try to connect you need a connection while teaching poetry i have seen a number of teachers they shy away or they fear from teaching poetry because many of them think that teaching prose is very easy when poetry is difficult and we feel poetry is difficult because we are not able to connect with the scene so here it's important that you make connection with the literary piece that you're going to teach now every poem comes with a moral or a message the theme is different it's very important that you identify the theme also but at the end of it it's very important that we try to convey the message or the moral of the poem to the students now while teaching poetry there is a little bit of homework that we need to do and first and foremost what we have to do is we have to activate prior knowledge now when we say activate prior knowledge it's activating the prior knowledge of the students for example if you are teaching a poem on wordsworth or sarojini naidu or ravindranath tagore there are many chances that these same poets maybe may uh, have appeared for these maybe in the 10th standard or 12th or maybe in the um, lower classes so if you are teaching such a poem it's very important that you try to know what the students already know about this poet try to understand if they know anything about the works they have done maybe the themes that they have dealt with so here a background is very important even when we speak about a poem it's a poet it's very important that we try to focus upon the background before we start the poem secondly read the entire poem it's very important that we read the whole poem so that the students understand if need be you can read it for maybe two times three times once they understand try to explore the language everybody writes in a different style so it's very important that you explore the language try to understand what is new what is unique or what is different in this person's writing and as i said earlier try to identify the theme every poem comes with a theme so you identify the theme focus upon the facts so when you talk about facts what actually prompted the poet to write this poem was was there some kind of you know some incident or some event does the poem have autobiographical elements are there any personal touches 
what made him write this poem now the poet already you know gives his point of view but as a teacher of poetry it's important that you add your own perspective to this poem try to understand what the poet has said but it's very important as teachers especially as english teachers to add new perspectives ignite the curiosity of the students make them curious as i said earlier when teachers shy away from teaching poem in the same way students are also scared afraid they fear learning poetry and grammar special now here it's very important that you make it interesting make the teaching of poetry interesting and this can be done only when you ignite the curiosity make them curious make them inquisitive create a spirit of inquiry within the students and most important your teaching of poetry should be a pleasurable experience give out joy give out pleasure let them really enjoy what you have taught and if you add all this to the teaching of poetry automatically the students will love to attend your poetry lectures some other tips is allow the students to read the poem once you finish teaching once you finish explaining i personally feel it's very important to give some quiet time to the students so that they can read the poem and they can try to understand or maybe you know they can also try to add newer dimensions to what you have already said now here it says recite the poem now, i don't think there's anybody who can recite a poem there were times when actually poems were sung or recited fair enough if we cannot recite we can at least read the poem read it loud and clear with proper pronunciation so that a lot can be learned from you let the students participate and the students can participate only when you allow them to participate teaching poetry should not be a one way method it should be a give and take method when you give something and you get back something from the students in response this helps them you know think creatively this also inspires them that's very important that we you know um, add this or establish a culture of observation i mean you talk about observation it should be individual observation as when well, as well as communal observation when i say communal observation i mean common observation what each student has got to think about the poem or say about the poem and then what the entire class or what students as a group observe from that poem let them also explore teach them the importance of exploring i mean you ask them to explore it's very important that you use model poems for example you can take birdsworth and you can take some other nature poet maybe from marathi or hindi or you can take arun kolatkar's butterfly and you can take the same poem by wordsworth you can make a comparison you can talk about you know different poems different poets their contribution the different types of poems basically what we have to remember is teaching poetry should be a joyful experience it should be a celebration you know after every lecture on poetry the students should feel they have got something they have been inspired their imagination should set soaring and this is the work of the teacher now when we teach there are some challenges that we face as teachers basically what am i teaching what is the topic that is being discussed here very often you know we come with some kind of bias some kind of prejudice maybe some kind of preconceived notions right it's very important that we leave all this you know our 
our bias or our prejudice, we leave it out outside the classroom and we come with a clear mind. We come with a clear vision. Do not get your preconceived notions with you when you teach poetry. Secondly, there is a need to refocus. I say refocus, I don't say focus because we are always focusing. When I say refocus, every time you read a poem, you should be able to refocus and you should be able to add something new. For example, the new textbook that has been introduced, Literary Minds, Mindscapes. This year you teach the poems, next year you teach and after that you teach, you will realize that with each year, you are having an enriching experience. You are being able to add something more to it. And that is why I say refocus. And when you refocus, you refocus on the structure, the meaning of the poem, the theme, the message, maybe the rhyme scheme. You can also go in for a critical analysis of the poem. And maybe, you know, in your class, in your criticism class, you can even tell your students, the department students, about how to critically analyze a poem. Now, there are various reasons why you need to teach poetry and why you need to learn the same. For the students, why do you need to learn poems? And for the teachers, why do you teach? Now, here again, as I said, you can have different reasons. Everybody teaches, reason, everybody teaches poetry for different reasons. Now, basically, poetry teaching helps you to find a voice. Poetry teaching helps you to give a representation. Teaching poetry is, you know, very challenging because it says, you know, it activates not only your mind, but it activates your mind, your soul, your heart. It activates all your sensory organs. And this is something very beautiful. It helps you, you know, while speaking, even while speaking, it helps you to think. It also helps you to listen to your inner voice. Teaching poetry can also motivate so many students who are reluctant to read, who are reluctant to write. This inspiration, this imagination can bring out some real authentic writers from within us. Most important, poetry defies all rules. You cannot teach poetry within watertight compartments. While teaching poetry, you have to think outside the box. As I said earlier, think beyond. And definitely teaching poetry is a universal way, it's a bridge. It is something that bridges the entire world as it helps you to express your voice and express, express your feelings. Most important, poetry also gives you the capacity. When I say capacity, it helps build your literary ability while helping you to foster different kinds of learning. It can be social or emotional. So I think we should all add to this and you know try to understand why do we teach poetry? What are the reasons to learn poetry? There are also some very positive purposes of learning poetry. As, I, as you can see on your screen, it helps develop your vocabulary. If you look at poetry, or if you if you know if you have this experience, you will realize that you can just enrich your vocabulary. Further, it helps you to develop your reasoning skills. It helps to develop this, you know, intellectual connect. In addition to this, you can have insightful opinions. You can have a lot of novel ideas. When I say novel ideas, I mean new ideas. You can also talk or you can develop different ways of expression. Look at the language. It can, you know, activate your thought, your thinking process. 
what is most important is without imagination poetry is nothing and so the positive purpose is it helps captivate imagination it helps transmit our feelings our thoughts our ideas universally and most significantly poetry is a timeless is an immortal resourceful art there can be a lot of other positive purposes also of teaching poetry now i directly come to those eight poems mentioned in our syllabus for fifth semester and four for the sixth semester now here you have the solitary reaper by william wordsworth all of us are aware we are well acquainted with this poem so i don't i i will not uh, read the poem while teaching this poem it's very important to inform or to students that william wordsworth was born and brought up in the lake district of england and the beauty of this place had definitely a significant impact on his teaching on his writing and further his attitude towards poetry now this particular poem was inspired on a trip to scotland with his sister dorothy wordsworth a reflection of an overwhelming emotional experience but the poet was mesmerized by this girl's song he is truly unable to decipher the song's meaning but he understands that it is a melancholic song the poet could not probably comprehend the local scottish dialect but he tries to imagine what the poem must be what the theme of the poem must be he says it can be some natural loss or pain or maybe some you know uh, humble theme or some unhappy times but he decides further that instead of probing in and trying to understand what she is singing about or what exactly the theme of the poem is he just decides not to probe further into the theme but just enjoy and cherish the poem but here it's very important that we focus upon the language which is a very straightforward language the theme the imagery is everything relates to nature this belief in the vitality of the natural world is very evident here and wordsworth wordsworth's own definition of poetry that is it's a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings is highlighted in this poem you know there is a symbolic comparison between the cuckoo and the nightingale sometimes we find a bit of exaggeration there is the use of rhetoric questions also but this is basically to express his curiosity and the imagery that he shares in this poem helps to enable the readers to perceive things involving their five senses coming to the second poem the queen's rival was by sarojini naidu who was also known as the nightingale now this poem a majority of her poems are based on ballads especially this one is based on a persian ballad now the queen here she is tired she is literally tired of having to compete or rather she is tired of having none to compete with now there is the influence of the persian literature or the imagery on this poem this poem being divided into three stanzas at the core depicts the theme of motherhood you know the queen is 
very upset, very sad, because she feels there is no one to even give her a tough fight when it comes to her beauty or her riches. But then she realizes that no riches in the world can compensate for motherhood. Motherhood is a priceless gift from nature. It's an emotion that every woman possess. And finally, it is her little daughter, just two years old, who makes her realize that motherhood is a complement which every woman needs. And further, it's only motherhood that can complete a woman. Coming to the third poem, The Village Schoolmaster. Now, this poem is an extract from the famous work of Oliver Goldsmith, The Deserted Village. Now, when you say the village schoolmaster, the word village suggests the rural setup. It's a realistic picture about the speaker's sentiments for his teacher. The poem portrays a schoolmaster respected by everyone for his immense knowledge and his skills at arguing. Here the poet reflects on the fact that things could change in the course of time, how things changes. It's a kind of looking back at the past. The main theme is one of nostalgia being displaced by modernization. Now here it's important to focus on the fact, especially as teachers, we need to introspect because it says that the schoolmaster here possessed various skills. He was not only well versed in his language, but he was a master in the truest sense because he literally knew about everything. The villagers, the village parson, the students, they could all look up to him for a remedy to their problems, for a solution. It says that he possessed wisdom, knowledge, and different skills. So I repeat here again, when we talk of 21st century skills, or when we talk about, you know, different types of soft skills, for our students, it's very important that we first we upgrade ourselves with these important skills before we ask our students to upgrade themselves. The next one is a very beautiful poem by Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken. Now here again, Frost was inspired to write this poem when he was with his friend Edward Thomas in Gloucestershire. Now, you know, he used to go with Edward for long walks into the countryside with, to acquaint his friend Frost with the specialities or the rarities of the countryside. And Edward Thomas always took a new route so that they discover something new. But however, he would regret his choice and wish that they chose another path. But this happened regularly. And Frost took this opportunity to make use of his friends' wasted regrets. Because even any kind of regret should not go wasted. What Frost did was he tried to romanticize this notion of what might have been and returning back to America, he incorporated this notion into the composition of a poetry. This poem combines rustic simplicity with hidden and implied meaning. It also goes on to say that life is a continuous journey full of divergence all the time. The two roads mentioned here are 
symbolic symbols of challenges and choices that come our way there is also a psychological implication of regret and uncertainty it also reflects on the human psyche during the process of decision making now the speaker's conflict here is by deciding to choose between the two virtually identical roles now being an ambiguous poem it's all about choices and uncertainties there is also a little regret of not being able to travel on both the roads however he is happy that his life changed for the better as he took the low road less traveled now it's worth reflecting was the choice of the road less traveled a positive one he says it made all the difference now what what exactly what the, was this difference now here as teachers of poetry it's important that we try to look at this you know what was the difference made let's add more dimensions to what the poet already meant now this poem is all about what did not happen because the poet was faced with an important conscious decision now destined to choose one you know in life we have this you know sometimes we have a lot of options but then we have we have to choose any one so destined to choose any one be regretting not being able to take both so we have to sacrifice one for the other and this is you know the basic theme of the poem can you hear me am i yes madam yes ma'am yes yeah. you are audible is my screen visible no ma'am it's not visible just just a minute please give me two minutes Please give me a moment. Please ask. Am I visible? Ah, yes, yes ma'am. It's visible now. Okay. Sorry, sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. The next one is "Ode to Beauty" by uh, John Keats, and this poem is taken from *Endymion*, Book One. Now, the poem is about nature and how its wonders mesmerize us. nature helps heal our sorrows and our pain now this poem is based on the greek mythology about a young shepherd named endymion his quest for goddess dina and during the process of his search for her how he falls in love with an earthly maiden who actually turns out to be goddess dina in disguise Now the most wonderful line here is a thing of beauty is a joy forever which says a thing of beauty is a source of endless joy 
Eternal beauty actually never fails. Attachment to earthly things are traps that bind us because materialism keeps us away from eternal happiness. Now, all the negative forces of the world fade away by nature's positivity. Here, there is another beautiful line which says, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Now, what are these beautiful things? They can be so many different things. In the poem, it says, the beautiful things are the sun, which gives you energy, the moon, which gives you beauty, trees that give you shade, animals that make your life like make your world lively, pretty flowers that make the surrounding beautiful, streams to refresh and cool you, brave soldiers to protect you. Now beauty or beautiful things are fountains of immortality bestowed upon us. We are inspired to live on and maintain our faith in goodness. Now for our syllabus, only the first 24 lines have been taken. Now as a part of an assignment, you can ask your students to list the things of beauty other than mentioned in the poem. You can also ask them to make a list of things that cause suffering. Further, as teachers, it's very important to focus on these new words, for example, power, moral, reading, spite, sprouting, shady boon, doomsday, heaven's brink, etc. The next poem that we have here is Sita by Toru Dutt. Now this poem appears from Dutt's posthumous poetry collection called Ancient Ballads and Legends of Hindustan. It's a nostalgic story of the poet's childhood. The Sanskrit mythology or the mythological tales told by her mother made her emotional. Now the poem is based on the reaction of the three children after listening to the second exile of Sita. Now it's, you know, uh, a paradoxical idea in the poem which says three children happy inside their darkened room. Now how can children be happy in darkness? Normally children fear darkness, but their faces show something else. And this, that is wide open eyes portray their amazement. Now this poem revolves around themes such as seclusion, longing, patriotism, and nostalgia. Also present are the themes of myth, loneliness, and the beauty of the Indian landscape. Sita is portrayed as a motive of seclusion, grief, and love. The character of Sita impacted the poet intensely when she was a child. She experienced the same feeling as Sita when Sita was being detached from her husband, Ra. Now, Sita was a sad woman turned down by her husband, while the poet was also sad because she had moved out of her country for higher education. Now, this is a kind of self-imposed exile. The next poem here is Life by Charlotte Bronte, a very, very beautiful poem which describes the overwhelming true joys of life. It also dispels the images of a dark and dreary life. The poem seeks to dispel the myth that life is bad or life is dark and life is unpleasant, unpleasant, sorry. The poet here tries to tell us that life is full of merry, full of cheer, and one needs to celebrate life. She also makes an attempt to minimize the power of death. She says that nothing can quell courage, not even death. 
Very often, death seems to step into our lives, creating sorrow. Sometimes sorrow seems to win. We often fall in sorrow, but need to bounce back in hope. Death may snatch away our loved ones, but hope can win us against darkness. Now, the title Life is suggestive about what she is going to say. Life is not to be feared, nor dark dreams to be dreaded. Because gloom comes before joy. Now, there is no reason to lament over different aspects or elements of life. Because everything is temporary. Negativity will pass by giving way to positive elements. The different faces of life needs to be celebrated because hope is described here as having elastic springs in the sense it can rebound. So therefore it's important that in life we hold on to hope because not even death can touch it. The next poem here is this is the last poem, My Last Duchess, by Robert Browning. And I think we have taught this poem n number of times. This is a perfect example of a dramatic monologue in five sections. A chilling poem which reflects on the value of women in the life of the Duke. Now, before teaching this poem, it's important that you reflect or help the students understand by throwing some light on the darkest aspects of the Victorian life. The treatment of wives at the hands of their husbands. Wives were treated as something disposable and were often accused. Wives were robbed of their joy by their husbands controlling attitude. Now the objectification of woman is seen throughout the book poem and the, the Duke reveals his belief that women are objects to be controlled, possessed and discarded. Now the Victorian social norms denied women the right to be fully independent human beings. Now here the Duke suggests that his wife did something that he did not approve of. He tells the listener to sit down and hear him talk. He draws the curtain to show him the life-sized portrait of his Duchess. Now the suspicious nature of the Duke comes to the fore. The joyful looks on her face her earnest glance, all this troubled him endless. He says that she was easily pleased by anyone's presence. He hated her blushing and her common courtesy. But the Duke is trying to explain to the listener regarding the so-called flaws in her character. And he thinks that he has done a great job by giving her a name of a 900 years old. The truth is, the Duke never tried to discuss with her what really disgusted him. She smiled too easily and he gave commands to stop her smiles forever. There is a few lines which mention about the statue of the seahorse being tamed by Neptune which is highly symbolic. Now here, Neptune is the Duke, whereas the seahorse is the Duchess. And this is not the only Duchess. He has always controlled all his wives. And you know, the tragic end that they meet is very, very evident in this poem. Now Browning focuses on the viewpoint that sexism and objectification are dehumanizing acts that women that rob women of their harmony and humanity. 
So these were the eight poems I have tried to focus upon and throw a little light. In conclusion, I would like to quote W.B. Eats. He says the same thing. He says poetry ignites not only our blood, that is, it does not ignite us only physically, but it, you know, it touches our imagination, our intellect, all our sensory organs, that is, touch, taste, audio, vision, smell. And it is nothing but a powerful set of feelings, a powerful set of emotions recollected without any obstruction in tranquility. I would like to close by once again thanking the college, the Department of English for helping me bringing out a newer perspective to this poems. And I'm sure you must have been benefited at least a little. Thank you so much. Poetry comes from the highest happiness or the deepest sorrow, and poetry is a way of taking life by the throat. Really, a very nice speech given by Dr. Ani John, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, madam, for your valuable uh, guidance uh, in this uh, very interesting program. Now the first session is going to an end. I invite Mr. M.T. Sunkamle sir for vote of thanks. Mr. M.T. Sunkamle sir. Uh, in this first session, I'm very grateful to thank respected honorable professor and John madam. Uh, madam, your talk is really important for the students who are learning in the uh, last year. So you have given a really important information, uh, explaining it in detail using the PPT and showing different poems which are prescribed in this uh, third year. So definitely uh, we got wonderful information from you. And I would like to thank once again for this detailed information. Uh, again, I would like to thank uh, our principal, Professor Andare sir, and all the head of various departments and the faculty for presence in this session. So I especially thanks to Professor Guru Madam for introducing today's resource person, Dr. Annie John Madam. Uh, at last, again, I would like to offer my sincere thanks to all the students who have participated in this uh, session. Thank you once again, all of you. Thank you, sir. Now, second session uh, will be start here. Uh, I would like to request Dr. A.S. Shinde, sir, Department of Geography, to give the introduction of Professor M.P. Joshi, sir. HOD, the Department of English, Malchen College of Arts and Science, Solapur. Dr. A. Shinde, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, on the view of the national level in seminar of new curriculum of English compulsory for BA third and BAC third year students, sir. Organized by uh, TB Kirgiz, Basveshwar Science, Raja Vijay Singh Commerce, and Raja Vijay Singh Arts College, Upper Court. I would like to introduce the dynamic personality of this uh, technical session uh, of Professor Manohar Prushottam Joshi. Uh, sir has acquired EMA BF. Uh, Qualification. He has a, a state exam pass also, and he is a, uh, uh, has completed PhD degree. He is a, now professor and head department of English in Walton College of Arts and Science of, of Solapur. Uh, he is the vice principal of that art section in that uh, Walton College, 
and he has joined up in walton college from 2nd august uh, 1999 he has completed a um, uh, total experience of uh, teaching of 23 years um, he is uh, uh, um, known as a triangular poet good translator of uh, english he is good writer and he is a vice president of eltai solapur in city chapters his um, academic achievement is uh, very very nice sir has completed one uh, ugc minor research project uh, granted of 75000 rupees uh, from ugc and uh, his title was uh, a study of interpretation of gandhism in the select uh, 21 century bio graphic of uh, on mk gandhi in 2014 he has been awarded as a phd uh, research guide in swami ramanand tirth maratwada university of nanded um, sir has published more than 20 research publish uh, research papers in peer reviewed uh, uh, journals uh, uh, reputed journals at the national international level and uh, some papers in that proceedings and journals he has uh, written uh, many books in english language and literature uh, uh, namely uh, unique people different path uh, management uh, vision of uh, samartam ramdas uh, he is uh, 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 he has acquired uh, many honors and awards uh, Uh, from other institutions um, in that uh, awards uh, lokmangal awards for excellence in translation in 2015 15 meritorious teachers award by lions club of solapur central in 2015 um, dalobhav jain award for prabandh a collection of poems in marathi in 2006 urdu dost award um, Uh, he has selected as vice president of eltai solapur university chapter in 2019 he is meritorious lecture award um, uh, in uh, 2019 um, he has um, uh, his uh, other achievement is um, oh, good sir uh, recited poetry on ar solapur and poets meet sir uh, he spoke as resource person at different educational institutes he published uh, much of that classical on language on uh, in daily circle uh, this person is the dynamic personality and uh, uh, so uh, such reno, uh, uh, renowned uh, personality expert uh, is with us i welcome uh, dr joshi sir for guiding us, us. thank you very much sir as you know the second session topic mainly is teaching prose now, now we are very much eager to listen the scholarly session on teaching prose so i invite professor mp joshi sir hod department of english walchand college of arts and science for his excellence guidance professor mp joshi sir Thank you very much. Am I audible to all of you? Ah yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, it's very fine. Uh, I think uh, Professor Shinde uh, put me on the pedestal already, and uh, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, one-day national level seminar. for having invited me as uh, one of the resource persons i have been given the topic uh, teaching prose i think somebody's microphone is on i think uh, professor kori's microphone is on please ha sir madhavi kori uh, please you turn your mic hello uh, madhavi kori yes it is professor kori's microphone which was uh, unconsciously switched on it happens you know on the virtual platform sometimes you know willingly unwillingly we switch on the videos and show what we should not have shown to the entire world 
or sometimes we switch on the microphones and uh, a number of monologues and soliloquies are made public and uh, i can see the number of participants here it was more than 100 in the morning now it has gone down to almost 50 odd participants i think this is the strength of uh, uh, the audience is my dear friends the swelling has already gone away okay coming back to my topic it is uh, teaching pros uh, after a very wonderful uh, session uh, delivered by uh, uh, the chairperson of uh, bos in english of our university honorable dr annie john man uh, on teaching uh, poetry it's my turn to deal with uh, teaching pros and uh, it should be actually teaching uh, short stories because we have all uh, short stories included uh, under this particular section in the compulsory english textbook of our university prescribed at uh, ba and bsc third year now uh, before i start my session you know i would like to uh, bring on record a couple of uh, issues that i have been uh, thinking about for so many years now why it should be called compulsory english in the first place because whatever is compulsory whatever is obligatory whatever is mandatory uh, becomes very dry and cheerless for the students and uh, this is the first observation this is my personal opinion and of course i know there are certain restrictions and limitations regarding the nomenclatures uh, used by uh, the universities right so instead of calling it compulsory english only english uh, is quite sufficient because when you say compulsory english the entire approach of the teaching community and of course uh, the student community also gets uh, inside out changed so if at all we want to make english uh, you call it a pleasurable uh, experience for the teachers as well as the taught the word compulsory should be dumped this is my personal opinion once again let this uh, seminar and the virtual platform uh, given by the cb uh, khedgi's group of colleges of akkalkot uh, uh, be the origin of this uh, discussion uh, that the word compulsory should go and instead of compulsory english we should call it english only it will do because you can see all the students you know doing undergraduation whether they belong to arts or commerce or science you know uh, they have to deal with english so if at all we want to make it pleasurable delightful and of course blissful experience of uh, getting abreast of uh, some of the beautiful texts prescribed in this book instead of calling it compulsory english although we have got subtitles you know given to the uh, compulsory english textbooks as this textbook at uh, ug third year level uh, is titled literary mindscapes uh, but i think uh, it should not be compulsory english it should be english only the second observation that i would like to bring on the record by virtue of this uh, you know uh, intellectual you call it interaction is that why should we restrict english uh, you know as far as science and commerce students are concerned to only two years of their undergraduation this is once again a very uh, big issue uh, because you know the students uh, belonging to commerce and science uh, get uh, the opportunity of learning english uh, only two times during their graduation so and the students of arts for that matter get uh, uh, you can see uh, the opportunity of getting familiar with english language and literature at all the three years so these are the two issues that uh, I wanted just to bring to the notice of uh, the scholarly uh, audiences over here. Okay, uh, let me uh, go uh, for my presentation without wasting time. I hope I can present my uh, PPT. I have made a small scale PPT, a bunch of uh, a few slides that I'm going to harass the audiences with, if at all you allow me to say so. Okay, I hope. Uh, okay. okay, is it visible to all of you? Ah, yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wonderful. So I will skip the initial. Uh, this is the second plenary session, teaching pros, and uh, we come to a very important slide here. You know, normally in my presentations, uh, 
I begin my, uh, you call it uh, exposition uh, with the help of uh, the outcomes of the presentation, because you know, you have to restrict yourselves to certain uh, objectives, uh, which uh, end in uh, these outcomes, right? So you can see the participants, uh, if at all they attend this session seriously, uh, will get a breast of short story as a literary type, as a genre, as you call it. And uh, they will comprehend the elements of short story. If at all you want to understand short story as a literary type, or a genre as it is correctly pronounced uh, because it happens to be a French word, uh, you must know the elements, the constituents of short story so that you can understand uh, what a short story is all about. And they will also know thematic interpretations of short story. Now you can see this presentation is meant not only for the teachers of uh, English uh, at BA and BSc third year level, uh, but for the benefit of the students as well, because I can see a number of students participating in this uh, particular seminar. Now you can see, we all know a lot about literature because uh, we have been, uh, you can say, uh, living on um, this particular concept called literature for years together, my dear friends. So I did not throw any special or a particular light on uh, the concept of literature. Literature is a very universal phenomenon, my dear friends. Okay, so uh, instead of focusing on literature, let me come to the major types of literature. You can see I have not included the minor types here because that will unnecessarily extend my presentation. So you can see the major types. There are three major types. The first is poetry. It all began with uh, poetry. And uh, the second is uh, drama, and of course, the third is fiction. Now you can see the third major type of literature, fiction, happens to be a very, you call it a mixed bag. It's quite difficult to uh, fix uh, the origin of this particular uh, literary type or genre, because you can see short stories or stories have been a part and parcel of human life. Since time immemorial, we don't know when we started narrating stories to each other or to be more precise to one another, my dear friends. You can see it must have begun uh, with the invention of language itself. And we know that uh, human beings, our ancestors, actually started to speak languages, first of all. And uh, after that, you know, we started to write different languages. So you can see fiction, especially a type of fiction that is story or short story, you know, may go long back in time, my dear friends. We cannot fix its uh, origin as such. So we have to understand short story as a type of fiction uh, rather than a minor type of literature. I don't like it because, you know, fiction has got different types. For example, we have novel, full-fledged, uh, you call it uh, narrative composition, we have novellas, you know, we have uh, stories, we have short stories, we have anecdotes, we have parables, uh, we have uh, a number of other varieties of, uh, you can see, uh, narrations, right? So you can see short story as a, <coughs> sorry, type of uh, fiction. And um, as I have already told you that um, this session uh, is named teaching prose, but it is actually all short stories that uh, we have to get familiar with. So you can see uh, these definitions, these are all ready-made and cut and dry definitions. There is nothing new in this particular definition or the set of definitions that I am uh, uh, showing uh, to all of you right now. A short story happens to be a type of fiction that deals with few events or incidents in the life of select characters. You can see each of uh, these definitions, for that matter, has uh, uh, a few uh, repetitions here and there because uh, they happen to be an unavoidable uh, constituents uh, uh, that we have to go for. The short story, for that matter, is a precise narration of a simple plot consisting of few events with one or two major characters. Third definition, you can see short story presents an understanding or insight into the life of human beings. And the fourth definition, short story is an invented, which can also be interpreted as uh, 
imaginary or imaginary two uh, these are two different words altogether because uh, people confuse these two words you know uh, for each other imaginary is uh, imagination of what is real and imaginate you is something that is unreal and it is imagined so imaginary prose narrative shorter than a novel usually dealing with a few characters and aiming at unity of effect and often concentrating on the creation of mood rather than plot now this definition has been taken from merriam webster's dictionary and uh, the last one you can see short story is a brief fictional prose narrative that is shorter than a novel and uh, that usually deals with one sorry only a few characters we can remove a uh, and we can make a few characters that uh, can also be a very suitable phrase here because uh, a story does not allow uh, you know sufficient scope for going for too many characters as such so you can see this is a definition taken from encyclopedia uh, britannica one of the reliable websites or web sources uh, i can say so after having seen the definitions of short story you might have come across certain repetitions uh, here and uh, after this we will quickly have a look at uh, the elements of short story you can see when we have to deal with a short story when we have to teach a st short story or when we have to uh, read and appreciate a short story for that matter we must know the elements of short story now you may ask me a question you know uh, can we put all these things down the throats of uh, the compulsory english students now it depends upon the skills of the teachers my dear friends you know you have to give the medicine in order to cure you know you call it anglophobia my dear friends now you can see teachers are almost like doctors uh, who can administer you know medicines uh, by using different tactics right so it all depends upon the way in which the teacher uh, you uh, can say deals with his students belonging to compulsory english because you see compulsory english classes are jam packed classes you get 60 70 80 around 100 students in the class that is quite difficult to you know um, attend to each and every student you know uh, sitting in the classroom for the last uh, you know two years we have been using uh, the virtual platform for this academic interaction okay so if at all you want to teach uh, a story or if at all you want to read and appreciate a story you have to understand different elements of a uh, story you can see the first element happens to be the characters a story has characters and uh, as it has already been uh, seen in the previous slide that a story allows a uh, few characters only now you can see there are uh, different ways in which we can uh, understand these elements of short story but uh, i don't think i have much uh, time to delineate you know on all these uh, elements because we have to uh, go a long way so characters are there uh, which can be human or sometimes we have non human characters as well especially we might have come across fables my dear friends in fables we have got animals we have non human characters and uh, uh, these non human characters uh, are made to think you know speak and act like human beings right okay and in an ordinary story uh, there can be a combination of both human and non human characters sometimes we get super human characters as well terror stories for example right ghost stories for that matter so you can see you can think about characters and you can get the students uh, familiar with the varieties of characters that a short story may incorporate followed by the the other important uh, element it is plot now you can see plot happens to be a very uh, important constituent of a story before you know the writer starts writing down a story he has to imagine the plot now this is not uh, a spatial concept this plot is quite a literary concept for that matter right so plot is nothing but 
a series of uh, events and incidents arranged in a systematic manner arranged in a cause and effect manner uh, the writer has to follow the theory of causality as it is said you know so it is supposed to be the cause and effect manner that uh, the writer has to make use of now you can see there are different ways in which uh, a story writer can uh, uh, compose his plot and a plot must have a structure of its own as a story has a beginning right it has a middle and it has an end there have been a number of writers in this world who are known for you know the endings of their stories for example we have uh, o henry and we have an example of uh, one of the stories by uh, o henry we shall come to that particular point afterwards so you can see plot plays a very important role as far as story is concerned so most of the times you know a short story writer has to go for a simple plot because using complex plot is not advisable as far as story writing is concerned okay and then we have another very important uh, issue another important uh, constituent it is supposed to be point of view now you can see the plot is ready the characters have been uh, chosen by the writer all that he has to do is to adopt the methodology of narrating the plot narrating about the characters included in the plot it is supposed to be the point of view the manner in which the plot in a short story is unfolded or it is unearthed as it is said you can see point of view plays a very important role it is the point of view of the author towards his fictional world my dear friends he has created a fictional world it's a very beautiful concept and he has his own point of view and uh, you can see there are different ways in which you can narrate because we know that drama has action for its essence right the soul of drama is action right but the soul of fiction is narration right so you can see narration plays a very important role uh, in the success of uh, a story a story writer must be a good narrator right okay the fourth important element uh, of a short story happens to be setting now you can see the plot is ready the characters are ready the point of view is also ready now all that the writer has to do is to select the setting a background is very necessary right you have to show that the characters belong to a particular time a particular place right a particular society or a social level right so setting plays a very important role now you can see all these are the technicalities that the students of compulsory english are not expected to digest but you can see you can bring them uh, to the consciousness of certain important issues when you teach uh, short stories you know in a compulsory english classroom my dear friends so setting has uh, the first aspect it is place you call it spatial setting second is time it is temporal setting and the third is society it is social setting so you can see there are different ways in which we can discuss these points but this is not uh, the platform that i should exploit for uh, the delineation of these aspects here the fifth important uh, element in any story for that matter or any literary work for that matter is conflict right so conflict is a very important aspect of a literary creation you know so you can see there is a conflict and this conflict you know creates or it gives rise to complication and you can see the story has tension and this tension is created deliberately uh, by the writer and uh, you know the story does not have a longer scope so a story writer has to do a lot of uh, you call it acrobatics in the beginning uh, uh, of the story itself so a kind of uh, a complication is introduced by virtue of uh, a conflict among the characters or there are different ways in which conflicts uh, can be seen we shall have some examples 
afterwards. Okay, so complication is created. And you can see how it is intensified, how it is magnified throughout the length of the story. Sixth important element in a short story happens to be the theme. And another very important aspect that goes hand in hand with theme, it is subject. Now, there are a number of people, you know, even teachers who are not able to differentiate theme from subject. I think theme and subject are two different concepts altogether, although they are two sides of a coin, my dear friends. Theme happens to be an abstract concept. Theme is abstract, but subject is concrete. Right? Now you can see, if you look at the first story, uh, in the four stories that I'm going to deal with, you know, by O. Henry, the gift of the Magi. I, I will come to the pronunciation of this word when I deal with this story. You can see there are two uh, characters, you know, depicted very beautifully by O. Henry, newly married couple, right? The, you call it loyal, sincere love of a newly married couple happens to be the theme of the story. And what is the subject? It is concretized, you know, with the example of two characters, right? Jim and Della. So you can see the basic difference between theme and subject. Theme is abstract. It's always going to be abstract, right? And subject is always going to be concrete, right? Okay. Then comes tone. Now you can see every writer has its own philosophy, right? And the tone of uh, a short story is decided by the philosophy that the writer has. You know, there are writers, you know, who are very humorous for that matter, who are very hopeful, who are very optimistic, right? Their stories become automatically humorous, playful, delightful, blissful. There are writers who have got a very hopeless attitude altogether. The writers who are pessimistic, you know. And you can see when a pessimistic writer writes, is always going to be very sad and sorrowful, very serious and grave in his tone. Now, there are some writers who feel that they have the responsibility of bringing, you know, the flaws and blunders and mistakes, you know, to a particular given society, you know, the writer becomes satirical, right? He becomes critical. He satirizes, he criticizes, and the tour is automatically very sharp and biting altogether. So you can see there are different tones that a short story has. After tone, we come to diction. You know, diction is nothing but language used in literature. To be very simple, you know, diction may sound a very technical term for that matter, especially for the students of compulsory English. But I think they should be, you know, initiated into different types of uh, technicalities by simplifying them. So diction is nothing but language in literature. Because you can see, standard language is different from the variety of language used in literature. And the use of language in literature is decided by a number of parameters. One of those parameters happens to be the genre, the literary type, right? If you're writing poetry, you have to use a different diction altogether. It's very condensed, compact, and succinct type of language that you have to use if you're writing poetry. If you're writing a short story for that matter, once again, you must be very, very, you know, precise in uh, the use of language. If you look at uh, uh, the example of a very famous American uh, writer, Ernest Hemingway, my dear friends, you know, is one of my uh, favorite authors, my dear friends. You know, he practiced a lot, right, during his childhood, during his pupillage. He wrote and kept, you know, writing months together, right, day in and day out, you know, he used to write and he used to practice. <clears throat> and only because of this, 
you call it practice revision dedication and application you can see how ernest hemingway became a master of narration my dear friends right okay so diction for you then we have figures uh, just as you see different types of uh, devices and tools used by poets and dramatists you can see some of those uh, dramatic sorry uh, literary devices being used in a short story as well so we have to search for the figures you know for example we have simile metaphor and there are other figures uh, uh, which can be employed by the short story writer so we have to search for those uh, linguistic devices or the literary tools that uh, a writer makes use of in order to make his uh, writing more polished more refined and more effective as well the last but not the least happens to be the title of the short story the story has a title the title is almost like a face of uh, a human being so if you look at the title of the story you have a smack of the story right you have a faint idea about what the story is right so you can see the title also plays a very important role and if you start your journey from the title and go to the body of the story and test the relevance of the title right and if the writer passes this test you can say hands down that the title happens to be a very suitable and relevant one okay i can see uh, after having created this uh, background if at all you uh, call it so i would like to give to the go to the examples you know because we have got four short stories uh, in uh, literary mindscapes two short stories in the fifth semester and two more short stories in the sixth semester and i know that the fifth semester is already over almost over and we are yet to go for the sixth semester so you will have uh, an understanding of what you are going to uh, see in the sixth semester of uh, this particular paper right okay so you can see the first uh, story is titled the gift of the magi now you can see there are many people in this world who are not able to pronounce this word correctly even i have heard it from a number of teachers also it's very sad affair my dear friends that uh, even teachers uh, don't pronounce the words correctly it is not magi right it is magi now as far as the compulsory english students are concerned you know you have to tell them that the pronunciation of this word should be done properly it is a plural taken from the word m a g u s yes. magus magus is uh, the singular noun and magi happens to be the plural one okay the gift of the magi by o henry and you can see when you teach <coughs> sorry <clears throat> i'm still trying to recover from um, an infect infectional onslaught i'm really sorry for that okay so you can see when you teach a, a short story or when you uh, read and appreciate for that matter a short story you have to look at all these aspects you know uh, first of all you may have a nodding acquaintance of the biography of the writer this is not essential this is not uh, you know you call it a uh, requisite as such but you must know you know the period of the writer the nation of the writer the original language in which uh, a particular short story was written by the writer you know all these uh, data for that matter play a very important role in our uh, appreciating a particular story so you can see william sedney porter uh, happened uh, to be the real name of this man and uh, you can see you can read the biography of the writer and uh, this is the responsibility of uh, the teachers for that matter because uh, a teacher has to 
you know, uh, assimilate the biographies and simply put forward the gist of the biographies to the students. You know, that is quite sufficient. So the pen name of this writer, O. Henry, you can see the period also. And you look at the major characters. You know? This is a very beautiful story. And uh, the story of a married couple, a recently married couple, right? And uh, so you can begin, uh, you can see uh, a kind of a background uh, uh, by talking about the life of the writer and then the major characters in uh, the story that is uh, James Dillingham Young and uh, Della. And uh, of course, these are the two major characters. It's only uh, two characters for that matter. And there are a few references here and there uh, to the characters outside uh, the story for that matter. Type of the plot, you can see this is a moral story. Once again, the complication is uh, created because of uh, an occasion. And it was an occasion of Christmas. And uh, you can see this was the first Christmas after the marriage of uh, these two persons, you know, uh, James and uh, Della, Jim and Della for that matter, a young couple uh, belonging to lower middle class of uh, the American society because we see O. Henry belonging to America. So you can see the special setting is not clearly stated by the writer, but we can make a guess. We can imagine that uh, the special setting uh, must be one of the towns in America and the Time selected, the temporal setting must be the contemporary times and uh, the social setting as well. It is lower middle class of the American society. And uh, you can, uh, you know, passingly tell the students about the narration done by the writer in this story. The point of view for that matter it is third person point of view. And we know a number of things about uh, the third person point of view, especially omniscient uh, narration because the writer knows all. Uh, about uh, the characters and their actions and all the events and incidents uh, in this particular uh, short story. So uh, after uh, talking you know, briefly about the point of view or the narrative methodology adopted by the writer, you can go to the tone. It is serious and humorous. You can see the story is very beautifully narrated by uh, O. Henry because there are certain passages uh, which are uh, you can see composed in a very detached manner altogether. Uh, the writer is omniscient, of course. He knows everything about, uh, you know, everything that is included in the story. But at the same time, you can see there are certain passages here and there uh, where we see uh, the writer, you know, keeps himself detached uh, from the action in the story. And this is a very wonderful uh, feature uh, that I like uh, a lot. Okay. Now, end of the story is quite surprising because uh, we see uh, two very, uh, you can say, disappointing decisions you know, taken uh, by Jim and Della because Jim and Della loved each other from the bottom of their heart, you know, and they wanted to gift each other something uh, that would be very, very precious altogether. But knowingly, unknowingly, you can see both these uh, persons, you know, had to sacrifice the asset that they had the best gift that god had given to them you know they had to sacrifice it so this is the story where we see different themes you know and some of the major themes you know uh, you can throw uh, light on these themes and passingly tell the students that uh, this story has these themes you know for example the theme of love we see a young couple recently married couple uh, drenched in love up their uh, you call it heads for that matter, and ready to sacrifice everything in their life for each other. And uh, you can see it also has uh, the theme of uh, benevolence. You know, this is one of the important Christian principles, my dear friends. Every religion has a set of values, a set of principles. And if you look at Christianity, you can see benevolence, large heartedness, generosity, you know, happens to be one of the uh, human values, my dear friends. And you can see how Dell sacrificed her hair. Dell had beautiful hair. She had long hair. And of course, uh, it was very, very dear to Jim as well. But Dell took a decision because she did not have much, uh, you can say, 
financial resources to depend upon. She had only a couple of dollars under her belt because her husband did not earn much. So you can see she had to sacrifice her beautiful asset. And by the time, you know, uh, uh, Jim got back home on that particular day, she came to know or she was uh, told by uh, Jim that uh, the golden chain that she had bought uh, you know, for Jim's historical, you call it watch, was of no use at all because he had already sold the watch. You can see both these persons, you know, sacrificed the best gift that they had, the best asset for that matter they had. So Dell had to sacrifice her long hair, you know, and Jim had to sacrifice the golden watch, you know, that was given to him by his father. And uh, it is uh, told by O. Henry to the readers that uh, this watch was very, very precious uh, to uh, James Dillingham Young and the Young family as well. So you can see this is the story of sacrifice as well. So sacrifice, you know, um, a kind of mutual sacrifice for that matter on the part of um, Jim and uh, Della can be seen in this particular story. Mutual belief is also a very important uh, aspect of this uh, story because you can see immediately after uh, these two persons, you know, came to know about uh, the sacrifices that they had done, you know, they were Yes, ready to accept each other without any grumbles, without any complaints. You know, this is supposed to be the mutual belief. And that plays a very important role in the successful marital life, right? Successful conjugal life, my dear friends. And the last but not the least theme in this particular story happens to be wisdom versus madness. Now you can see, if you see the title of the story, The Gift of the Vajai, you can easily see that uh, the real story you know, uh, takes us uh, back in time, almost uh, 2,000 years ago, when a small baby was born in uh, Bethlehem, which was uh, 10 miles away from Jerusalem, my dear friends. Right? Three wise men, you know, which were called who were called Magi, you know, went from you know the eastern half. Uh, of uh, the world to the western half and offer gifts. Now, what were the gifts offered by uh, the wise men? You can see gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Very precious gifts were offered by you know these wise men to the newly born uh, Jesus Christ. And you can see how these wise men were appreciated, admired, and praised all over the world for their wisdom. But you can see in this story, two very wonderful Mejai, right? And uh, in the form of Jim Mandela, sacrificing the best gift that God had given to them for each other. Now, at the end of the story, uh, there is a comparison between the three wise men, you know, the ancient uh, wise men on the one hand, and the modern, yes, wise men, you know. You know any Tom, Dick, or Harry cannot do this, you know, because we always love our gifts, especially the physical ones. You know, we never sacrifice them, and we are likely to call Jim a mad man, Della a mad woman, because they sacrificed the best thing that God had given to them. But you can see there is wisdom in madness, and once you see this. You understand the gist of the story. It's the second story, without wasting time, we'll go to Ravindranath Tagore's uh, The Homecoming. You can see this is once again a very beautiful story, a very touching story, a very revealing story written by Ravindranath Tagore. And you can see we are really fortunate, you know, uh, that we have uh, four, you know, writers coming from different, uh, yes, nations, different, uh, you call it uh, linguistic backgrounds and different cultural backgrounds as well. So one is an American writer, the second is an Indian writer, you know, third is, uh, of course, uh, uh, Anglo-Irish writer for that matter, and the fourth happens to be a Russian writer. So there is a variety, and we should be grateful to uh, the Board of Studies in English uh, of uh, PAH uh, Sonapur University for having uh, given us, you know, a very wonderful, uh, you call it, combination of four different 
author sent four different uh, stories for that matter. The homecoming is a very touching story. Once again, you can begin with the biography of the writer, Ravina Tagore. You know, we know a lot about Ravina Tagore, but you can uh, introduce the writer as a matter of formality. And then the major characters, for that matter, in the story are Fatik Chakravarti and Markan, and mother of Fatik and Markan. And then we have another character that is uh, Bishembar. Once again, this is a moral story. And the complication now in this story, the conflict in this story is created because of uh, you know, the desire you know, on the part of uh, Fatik Chakravarti, one of the leading characters in the story for freedom. Right. And this is uh, uh, the point uh, where uh, the story develops uh, complication. And you can see how the complication is uh, further intensified. How it is further magnified by the writer uh, to the end and the story has a very tragic end uh, but some people say that it's very ambiguous uh, end that is given to the story by Ravindranath Tagore. Once again you can see the setting uh, small village in West Bengal and uh, uh, the second part of the story brings us to uh, Calcutta of course it was then called Calcutta now it is called Kolkata contemporary times of Ravindranath Tagore uh, the temporal setting and the lower middle class uh, has been taken into consideration in the story. Third person point of view, once again, all the stories have got third person point of view for that matter. Now, this is a very serious narrative combined with uh, playful passages by Ravindranath Tagore. And we know Ravindranath Tagore was good at you know, translating his stories uh, written in Bengali language into English. This is called self-translation, uh, in other words. Okay. Now, the end of the story is very tragic. And to a certain extent, it is ambiguous as well. It is not clearly stated, you know, what exactly happened to Fatik Chakravarti, a boy of 14 years of age. Okay. And you can see the major themes handled by Ravindranath Tagore in this story. You can see adolescence and the sense of rebellion. Now, the leading character in this story, the homecoming, the title of the story, once again, a very important uh, aspect that uh, should be delineated, right? Because the homecoming is nothing but uh, a psychological process, right? It is not uh, a physical process for that matter. It's a psychological process, no? Uh, in Hindi, there is a very beautiful uh, uh, saying, uh, ka bhula, uh, sham ghar aaye, to use bhula nahi kehte, right? The same, uh, you know, saying can be the same proverb can be applied to this very heart uh, rending story written by Ravindranath Tagore. So you can see a 14 year old, old uh, Fatik Chakravarti, you know, rebelling against his mother, beating his younger brother, right? Literally leading a gang of uh, wayward children in the village doing whatever you know he wanted to do in his life but because of this uh, tendency because of this inclination because of this rebellious feelings you know in the minds of uh, in the mind of uh, fatik chakravarti he was punished by his mother right day in and day out so
you know, wanted to go back to his village. He was fed up with his maternal aunt, his cousins over there, the teachers uh, in the Calcutta school, the educational pattern over there, which uh, was not meant for, you know, such a mischievous uh, student as uh, Fadik Chakravarti was. So at the end, you can see uh, Fadik Chakravarti lying, you know, moribund in bed and the mother turned up, right? And the mother came running towards Fadik Chakravarti, who was bedridden, you know, because of uh, malaria, you know. He suffered from, in those times, of course, an incurable disease. And he wanted to go back home. He wanted to go back to his mother. He wanted to go back to his village. He wanted to enjoy all that he had been enjoying there. So he became quite nostalgic. Nostalgia, for that matter, is another uh, theme that is handled by uh, Tagore. Human relations for that matter, is uh, one more theme that is quite significant as far as the story is concerned. So at the end, you can see there is a very beautiful uh, interaction between Fadik Chakravarti, who was moribund, right, bedridden, almost, uh, you call it, comatic. And there was his mother, you know, who just, you know, touched her son. And there was an interaction. And uh, the last sentence is very beautiful. The uh, the story that is uh, the homecoming ends on a very tragic note, on a very sad note altogether. In the sixth semester, the first story happens to be growing up. This is by Joyce uh, Carey. And uh, once again, you can uh, deal with the biographical sketch of uh, Arthur Joyce Carey, who happened to be an Irish uh, writer. He was born and brought up in Ireland. But he wrote in English for that matter. Therefore, uh, uh, he's called Anglo-Irish uh, writer for that matter. Now you can see this story as the title uh, tells us, growing up, it is about the process of uh, growth in human life, especially adolescence. And in the second half of the story, it is the middle age as well. Now you can see growing is actually a universal phenomenon. Growing is a continuous phenomenon. Now you can see there are two important issues that we always uh, deal with. Number one, it is growth. And number two, it is development. Growth is automatic. Growth is natural. Development is not automatic. It is a deliberate process. It is an intentional process. Right? So whether we are willing or not, you know, we keep growing. So growing is always there. So growing happens to be a uh, universal uh, phenomenon, universal process for that matter. So you can see uh, there are once again a few characters here, Robert Quick and uh, the wife of uh, Robert Quick, uh, followed by two very important uh, uh, characters, that is Kate and Jerry. Now you can see uh, there is uh, an animal brought into the plot of this story that is snort happened to be the bitch tamed by kate and jerry now this is a psychological story because as i have been telling you growing up deals with the psychological process of uh, you know yes growth uh, that is not simply physical you know physical growth is easy to understand for that matter but the psychological growth happens to be a very difficult uh, process to be understood and digested as well. And uh, complication happens to be lack of anticipation on the part of Robert. Right? And the conflict is created because his two girls, one was 13 year, year, years of age, and the other one was 12 years of age. Jerry was 12 and Kate was 13. But Jerry was uh, more mature than Kate was because Jerry was given to reading a lot, right? And Kate was uh, a very mischievous uh, girl altogether, although she happened to be the elder sister of Jerry. You know, she uh, used to play with the bitch called Snort all the while, or she would be fine in the garden. 
playing on the swing over there. So you can see the difference here between these two uh, daughters of uh, Robert Quick and uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Robert Quick, for that matter. So unanticipation, ignorance on the part of the parents, you know, creates a kind of conflict. It creates a kind of complication in the story, which is further intensified. And eventually, at the end of the story, you can see Robert Quick had an understanding that he had forgotten that his daughters, you know, were becoming mature. You know, they were coming of age, as it is said. So the daughters who were in their adolescence period, right, were totally different from the daughters, you know, whom he had seen two years ago. Because you can see Robert Quick is shown as a businessman who used to go to different places and he used to be away from his house most of the times. Yet he loved his daughters a lot. Now you can see there is uh, a lot of, uh, you call it, uh, research done by Sigmund Freud uh, on these uh, mindsets, my dear friends, you know, uh, when he deals with uh, Oedipus complex and Electra complex, you can see the relationship between father and uh, daughter, right? And the relationship between mother and son. So you can see the father, that is Robert Quick, you know, loved both the daughters, but he had never expected uh, that they would give a very different type of uh, a reaction to him when they started to attain maturity, when they started to attain puberty, as we call it. And after that, you know, he had a realization that he had forgotten, you know, the very important process of growing up. He himself was growing up, you know, he was in his early 50s, middle age. So you can see there are two different simultaneous growths that we see in the story. On the one hand, we have the two daughters, that is, Kate and Jenny growing up, reacting to their parents in a very different manner altogether, especially to father, right? Becoming very violent to Robert Quick, you know, going for an onslaught on him while sitting in the garden. And the second growth comes in the later stage of the story. And this is a realization that Robert Quick had that he too was growing, right? Okay. And then you can see. Uh, this is uh, Irish setting, early 20th century, middle class, uh, the social setting for that matter, third person point of view. I have already told about uh, this particular aspect. And then the tone of the story is quite playful and serious. And the ending is quite revealing and disclosing. We come to know uh, a lot about uh, the process of uh, growing up. I have already discussed uh, you know, the themes of growing up, nature, that is human nature, and of course, the nature around uh, parenting is another issue that has been taken up by the story writer here. Worlds of men and women, for that matter, also plays a key role in appearance and reality. Then we come to the last uh, couple of slides, and then I will uh, call it a day, my dear friends. I can understand your uh, patience. Well, uh, this is the last story that is God sees the truth, but waits. Now, let me tell you, my dear friends, this is the story that I like the most. This is by Leo Tolstoy, a Russian writer who wrote this story in Russian language and translated by uh, the other Russian uh, counterpart afterwards. So you can see this is the story of a man who you know, did not commit any sins, but he was a man who was sinned against, as it is said. So you can see uh, the title is very complicated. It is slightly complex title. God sees the truth and there is a comma given and but waits. That completes the title. Okay, there are some characters that uh, we can talk about. Ivan Dimitrich Axionov. Axionov happens to be the protagonist, the hero of the story. His wife followed by a merchant friend who got murdered. And then we have an antagonist as you can say, villain of the story, that is Makar Semoinich. Semoinich happens to be the antagonist in the story. It's a moral story once again. And the complication, you can see innocence on the part of the hero. 
the hero is shown to be a very innocent person, a very carefree person, without any anticipation of this, you know, uh, very, very, you call it uh, dangerous world, my dear friends, you know, skimming and planning world altogether. So you can see this is the complication and uh, it gets further intensified throughout the length of the story. Uh, the location, of course, Russian uh, places, Vladimir and uh, uh, Disney fair, you know, and Siberian prison plays a very important role, you know, this particular, uh, you call it setting, a 19th century uh, scenario of Russia. And there are merchants and uh, criminals included in the story. And of course, third person point of view and the tone is very grave and serious. And at the end of the story, you know, uh, the readers are shocked because we see something that is entirely unexpected, my dear friends. So there is a twist in the tail, as it is said. Uh, these are the major themes in the story. You can see the hero of the story, that is Axionov, my dear friends, you know, did not commit any crime at all, but he was punished. Right? Axionov was a young merchant. He had a couple of uh, children. He had a very beautiful wife as well, living in a very small village called Vladimir in Russia. On one occasion, you know, he thought that he should undertake a visit to a village where a fair was held, just as we have Ganda Fair in Solapur. So he wanted to uh, make some business. His wife told him that he should not leave on that particular day because he ha she had a bad dream. But you can see this man did not pay any attention to his wife and he embarked upon the journey. During the journey, he first of all met a merchant who was actually his friend. And both these friends, you know, enjoyed uh, the company of uh, each other. They stayed at a hotel. And you can see it was the practice of uh, Axionov, you know, uh, doing things at the proper time. So he woke up in the morning and just left the hotel and carried on his journey. After he had traveled 25 miles away from that particular hotel, you know, and as he was resting there, as his horses were being uh, fed, you know, a police officer with soldiers came to the spot and they told him that the merchant friend that he had stayed with at the hotel was murdered. Unfortunately, the person who had committed the murder had put the knife with which you know he had killed you know that particular merchant in the things of Axionov. And of course, the evidence was, you know, quite clear. And the police officer arrested Axionov. And first of all, he was beaten severely. And eventually, he was sent to one of the prisons in Siberia. Now, this was a punishment that he had never expected. He had never anticipated that, you know, this type of a crime would fall on his head. So an innocent man was punished unnecessarily because of the wrongdoings of uh, a man called, uh, you can see his name, Simoinich. You can see 26 years, you know, he had to live in the prison. And eventually, after 26th year in the prison, there came a new gang of uh, prisoners, among whom the actual murderer was there. And you can see, eventually, you know, uh, the hero of our story, you know, Axionov, came to know that Semoinich was the person who had killed that mer merchant. And because of his, uh, you know, crime, he had to spend, you know, he had to spend almost 26 years in the prison. He had to lose everything that belonged to him. He lost his wife. His children, for that matter, had come of age and doing business quite well. But, you know, they would not be able to recognize this old man at all now. So at the end of the story, you can see how Axionov, although he came to know about the real murder, he did not reveal the secret to the police. He kept quiet. He just tolerated all the, you call it, uh, hardships you know, that were put upon him. He simply took the side of the reality. He never spoke about the person who had committed this murder and uh, you can see how he 
said that he was on the side of God. And you can see the title that he justified. God sees the truth but waits. And why, why does God wait? Because he waits to see how much patience you have, <laughs> much tolerance. Okay. So this is the set of themes and uh, innocence and care carefree life, deception, <laughs> betrothal by one's uh, own dear and dear ones, belief, tolerance, futility of vengeance, and at the end you can see significance Hello. of mercy. Okay. Thank you very much, my dear friends. I, think, uh, I have taken uh, more time than uh, what I was expected to use. Thanks a lot. Really a very informative and uh, impressive knowledgeable session just after just to come very much for your valuable uh, guidance in this session yeah. now the second session is going to an end i invite mr mt sunkam oh. sir for co thanks mr mt sunkam sir i am very happy to offer my sincere thanks to this second session resource person Dr. Manohar Joshi, sir, HOD, HOD Department of English, Walchan College of Arts and Science, Solapur. Uh, sir, uh, I'm really proud of you. Uh, I would like to thank you for time from your busy schedule to be with us here today and presenting uh, ample of knowledge in front of us about types of literature, details about the short story and about the pros which are prescribed in TY syllabus. Uh, in a very smooth and very sweet uh, voice and very fluently. Uh, thank you once again for presenting uh, this presentation. So again, I would like to thank you, Mr. Doctor, uh, for introducing the session's resource person, Dr. Joshi, sir. Uh, I also like to thank all the participants who are participated in this session. Thank you once again, all of you. Uh, thank you, sir. Now move towards the third session. Uh, first of all, I would like to once again uh, welcome all of you. I would like to uh, invite Mr. D.C. Kore, sir, HOD Department of Chemistry to give the introductions of Dr. Ram Rajan Mote, Sir, Department of English. So, Suvarnal Gandhi Maharaja Vera, Mr. D.C. Kori, Sir. Thank you, Sir. Good afternoon to everyone. Akkalakot Education Society, Civic Hedgiz, Vasveshwar Science, Raja Vijay Singh and Commerce and Raja Jay Singh Arts College Akkalko. Today's seminar is sponsored by Puneshlok Ahile Devi Holkar, Solapur University, Solapur, and organized by Department of English, CB Khedgiz College Akkalko. Uh, national e seminar on new curriculum of English compulsory BA, BSc, Thirdly. It's my great pleasure to introduce today's resource person of third session, Honorable Dr. Ram Raja Mote. He has completed MA in English in April 2004 with the first class from the Savitri Bhai Pune University, Pune. He has also qualified set exam in English in May 2005 from Pune University. He has also completed a computer science course that is the CDAC in 2003 with A grade from Pune. He has also completed his PhD under the title of Exploring the Self, the fictional word of Anita Nair and Jayasri Mishra in April 2015 from the Puneshlok Ahile Devi Holkar, Solapur University, Solapur. He is uh, presently working as a 
associate professor and a head of the department of english at so suvarnalata gandhi mahavidyalaya vaira his teaching experience is at ug level is 15 years at uh, so suvarnalata gandhi mahavidyalaya vaira now he has also working in pg level pg course uh, having the two years experience at sangmeshwar college solapur he has published so many publications uh, 19 research papers in journals various journals chap uh, five chapters published in various books four papers presented in international conference 17 papers presented in national conference six papers are published or papers presented in state level conference four papers are presented in university level conference so he is a member of uh, solapur english teacher organization his editorial uh, editorial positions advisory he is a advisory editor akan and international online humanities journals he has also got various awards so first one rashtriya yuva chetna puraskar award by kavya mitra sanstha pune grammast in january 2016 mahatma jyotirao phule gunwant shikshak puraskar in 2018 by dr punjabrao deshmukh shikshak parishad and maratha seva sang barshi and first in avishkar research festival from solapur university solapur so i hope that this session is very much effective and helpful to all of us and also for the students thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir third session's topic name is 21st century skills now we are very uh, much eager to listen the scholarly sessions on 21st century skills so i invite respected dr ramraj mote sir department of english so suvarnalata gandhi mahavidyalaya vaira for his excellent guidance respected dr ramraj mote sir hello good afternoon am i audible to all ah yes sir yes sir so it is a warm afternoon to all of us uh i'm very thankful to cb kedgis college akalkot for giving me this opportunity and uh, my nice introduction done dear students i think now most of the students in the meeting as we know that particularly professor joshi has mentioned the score of the participants decreased for the first session it was over 100 then it comes to 50 and now it is in 30s you know that this situation is quite difficult to the speaker it's like a cricket match which is in a slog over so we have to secure the wicket as well as score the runs according to the match situation so i'll try my best to score the runs and save the match or other way i will say that i will win the match also dear friends uh, ba part 3 and bsc part 3 we have a textbook and the title of the textbook was literary mindscape and you all have been enlightened by the great scholars like dr ani chon and professor joshi on teaching prose and teaching poetry and now the next section that is 21st century skills i will share my screen here is the screen visible to all no sir no sir sir it is slowly sir wait wait i 
I think it is visible now. Ah, yes, sir, yes, sir. So, uh, without wasting the time, we should start with the beautiful, we can say the quotation that is learning how to learn is life's most important skill. Dear students and teachers, we know that particularly this 21st century, in the second decade of the 21st century, we are facing a pandemic, a coronavirus or pandemic. And there was a drastic change in our field or in our academic field that is teaching learning process. And we have been introduced different skills, different technologies, different strategies to interact with the students. And with that, we comes to we comes across 21st century skills. So my turn to deal with you of the semester number six, and my friend, Dr. Suren, she will deal with of semester number five. So let's start with the teaching skills, that is 21st century skills. So what is 21st century skills? Dr. Suren, she will deal with. How many 21st of century skills are there? He will deal with that. My turn is that, what are the skills prescribed for the sixth semester? We are going to discuss these skills. The students, we know that teaching is a great skill. As we say that learning is also a great skill. And teaching skills is a very great skill of a teacher. So here, what is the assumption? The assumption is that teacher should be skillful to teach the skills to the students at BA or BSc level. So what are the skills prescribed for semester number six? Let's have a look. The first skill prescribed for semester number six, that is a literacy skill. And there are three literacy skills are prescribed. What are these? These are I M T. I stands for information literacy. M stands for media literacy, and T stands for technology literacy. Right. So I M T that is information literacy, media literacy, and technology literacy. And since last two years, we are facing these skills. Some of us facing it as a challenging, some of us facing it as useful. So we are going to discuss during this session. Then second skill here prescribed for this sixth semester is a life skills. And there are five life skills we are going to study in this semester. These are F, L, I, P, S. F stands for flexibility. L stands for leadership. I stands for initiative, P stands for productivity, and S stands for social skill. So these are the five skills uh, we are going to learn in this semester. And my dear students, there are other important skills also. There are other important skills prescribed for this semester. There are four, for example, global awareness, environment consciousness, civic literacy, and health literacy. Let's try to discuss these skills briefly. So the first skill is a literacy skill. And here, the definition of a literacy is, I may say that there are certain dimensions attached to this word literacy. Traditionally, we know that particularly literacy means a person who is able to read and write. That is called a literate. But now, in the changing situation, or we can say in today's technology world, the term literacy has been changed. Means you, you means all of us, should be able to use a technology 
or we should try to use it effectively or we can say that we should know how to use internet how to use cell phones laptops how to operate these cell phones and laptops and how to gather the information how to evaluate the information all these skills come under literacy skills so the first literacy skill prescribed for us is information literacy see now information literacy information literacy all of you know that particularly information is a very important we are looking for the information everyone every entity of the world for example as a students we are looking for the notes information textbooks stories as a teacher we are looking for the information as a researcher we are looking for the information and look at the change traditionally we have been gathering the information how we have to visit the library we have to search by the cupboard then we have to search for the book and then we have to search for the content of the book but now change made it as easy easy as possible how within a one click within a fraction of a time or fraction of a second we can access the information it is a good thing but this information should be organized evaluate authenticize so information literacy what it does it is a skill to find evaluate organize use and communicate information in its various formats isn't it now in this situation we are meeting virtually and here we can find that i am transferring certain information to all of us at that time i have to collect the information i have to evaluate the information i have to organize it and then i have to communicate it means i need that literacy to collect the information to organize it to evaluate it whether it is good or bad or whether it is useful or not then i have to use that to my lectures to my examination or to my other purposes so that skill we have to acquire see now dear friends we know that particularly we are living in the world of ict information communication technology and we know that particularly a lot of information come in before us or appear in before us at that time what is our role we should say that whether this information is useful to me or not and know that uh, earlier it was said that students should be away from the mobile phones or be away from the internet but now as a teachers as a parents we are giving these cell phones and we are asking in students to use the internet why because situation made us to that and in this technological or we can say uh, in this world where we can say that a uh, technology is dominating we got lot of information for example i will say that suppose we are using a uh, social media and that time what we do we try to understand that i am spending a lot of time on social media and i come across a lot of information the information is not related to me the information which is not useful to me i am accessing that information so it is a skill to relate it to make some limitations try to understand what is useful to us so this skill is uh, is going to help us we should be grateful to the board of studies uh, they have prescribed this skill 
to us, to the students, to understand what information is related to me and how to access that, how to evaluate that, how to organize that. Dear students, then the second skill is a media literacy, which is very, very useful for the undergraduate students. So why? Because in 21st of century, we are using media and we use, or we can say, a number of, or a number of medias. We know that particularly earlier, we, we used to uh, only print media. But now, this digital world, we are living in a digital age, and that digital world provides us a different kinds of media. So for us, for example, since the last two years, we teacher and students meeting virtually with the help of either the Zoom Meet or the other, uh, we can say, apps. Or or Google Meet or Zoom Meet, certain uh, apps. So here we can find that how to offer it that media is also very important. And the student, teacher, not only uh, that uh, only Zoom or uh, we can say Google Meet, but there are other medias. There are a number of apps in a mobile, or we can find that there are number of uh, media or through which we come across and we should aware about these medias in 21st of century. What this literacy does, this identifies different types of media and understand the messages, right? We use social media, for example, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and we should be updated in that. It is a need of a time. And we should use this social media for our educational purpose. And that skill is, we can say, very useful to all of us, which is prescribed for the sixth semester. Then the third, that is a technology literacy. So this is very important. You know, there, there, there are two groups now, we can find that in, a, in our profession also, in the profession of the teachers, there are two kinds of uh, groups. One group tries to accept the technology and tries to update accordingly. And another group says that technology is not, not going to helpful in teaching and learning. We are not going to in that debate, but my point is that we should update according to time in the technology. Why? Because technology is going to help us to improve. We should be aware about the new technologies in the world. For example, as a researcher, we should know that how to access the resources, online resources, online journals, online theses, online updates in my uh, uh, concern subject. So technology literacy gives us a knowledge about the latest technology. So you now, this is a kind of, we can say, literacy in which we should uh, take positive efforts and we should improve in that and we should make, uh, we can say that, our life as easy as possible. So with these three skills, I, M, T, that is information literacy, media literacy, and technology literacy, uh, we can say that, uh, uh, there is another skill that is life skills. Life skills, uh, as I told, there are five life skills prescribed for this semester, and they are very meaningful, not only for the examinations point of view, but for our life is concerned. So the first skill, which is very important, that is a flexibility. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain this word, why, because uh, there are students in this meeting. So flexibility means what? So flexibility means ability to adapt changes in the environment. See, in our day-to-day -day life, we come across different kinds of situations. 
sometimes which is we are in a difficult situation we have to adapt that situation we have to behave accordingly and then we can find that at the end we are going to overcome that difficult situation sometimes we can say that we have different situation so according to that situation we have to adapt ourselves that is called the flexibility and that skill is very meaningful for each and every individual in our life yes, so sir. next skill is a leadership so all of we know that particularly for uh, to success or to succeed in a life we should have joint joint venture for example i think someone is just microphone on let me request to mute okay thank you so the second skill is the leadership and through that skill we can succeed in our profession so what is the purpose of this skill purpose of this skill is leading a team towards achieving a determined goal as a teacher see every teacher is a leader in a classroom as a teacher you should lead your class towards achieving the determined goal as a principal lead a college as a individual lead a life towards the success so leadership skill is very important in our life that that is included in the syllabi that is a uh, life skills and the third skill in it that is initiative initiative means what to take a step to go forward see now here it is an ability to anticipate the things needed to complete a given task so we should take the initiative in our profession means what we should not or we can say waste the time at the right time we should take the initiative and we should complete the task within a time that that is life skill prescribed then productivity so productivity is we can say a kind of outcome so we can find that it means doing a given task efficiently and effectively so look at these uh, literacy skills we have discussed and we are discussing the life skills so we can say the mixture of literacy skills and life skills we can conclude with that a uh, productivity so if we use the skills for the specific task we can complete that task effectively and efficiently so productivity is very important in our life and there are certain social skills we can say that these social skills are also very important in our day to day life we know that particularly human being is a social animal and we want to live in a society so there are certain rituals customs traditions and in these we have to live happily for that we need skills and we call these skills are social skills so what these social skills does skills or what we can just say a social skills that allow a person to interact with others and act appropriately in social setting for example better cooperation coordination and empathy as we know that particularly uh, these things we can acquire through social skills cooperation coordination and empathy so with this five life skills we have some other important skills what are these other important skills let's have a brief look on it first is a global awareness all of you know that particularly internet makes us so close now we know that we all are at different places and we are meeting in this seminar how with the help of internet and this internet makes 
a whole world are very small or we can say very close so what is happening in usa within a fraction of second we comes to know in solapur or in, in india how because of this internet and here we should be globally aware so this skill internet or social media platforms and other platforms make a global communication and have made the world a very smaller now another important skill is environment consciousness so we should be aware about the environment and we should aware about surroundings and we should make choices in a sustainable manner that benefit our planet that is earth dear friends we should be aware about conserving the water and the energy we should also aware about reusing resources right and we also aware about recycling materials so this is also one of the important skills environment consciousness we know that particularly we say that green audit and all these things we have to use bicycles we have to uh, do certain things to save the earth tree plantation so that is a kind of a uh, skill uh, towards a uh, gratitude to earth or environment the third skill in this that is a civic literacy let me in, uh, explain what is called civic so here civic means what uh, we can say a civil civic means a person or we can say the citizen who knows about his rights or knowledge and skill of participating in civic life so it is a skill of a gaining relevant knowledge understanding governmental processes and knowing how to fulfill one's civic duties for example as a civilian we should know certain things we should aware about the government policies we should aware about the government the political parties the processes that is called civic literacy that is also skill see now we can say that uh, we cannot say that it is not my field or it is not my concern we cannot say that we should be aware about uh, our government its policies strategies uh, political parties so that is called the civic literacy and last skill prescribed for this semester was health literacy and all of you know that particularly we always say health is a wealth so and we always follow certain diet plans we try to go to gyms certain strategies certain online classes so health literacy is a very much needed in the 21st of century and we have been experiencing it since last two years how conscious we are towards our health this corona virus pandemic make all of makes all of us be alert and be conscious about our health so the health literacy gives an individual to collect knowledge and information that will help in maintaining and improving one's health so dear friends with this i tried my best to explain all the skills prescribed for semester number 6 i try to conclude my speech with robert greens quotation which is very meaningful to this the future belongs to those who learn more skills and combine them in a creative ways so we try to adapt the skills whether it is a life skills or literacy skills we try to adapt these skills and we try to succeed in our life it is my humble request to all the teachers so we should not teach the skills 21st century skills theoretically 
we should try to make our approach as experiential as possible. So with this request, I stop here and I extend my gratitude towards Dr. Khairadi, Professor Paranspe, and entire team of the uh, CBKD's college, Akkalkot, who have given me this great opportunity to interact with the students and my teachers, colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. A really a very informative and impressive, knowledgeable uh, session. Uh, sir, focus around different types of the uh, skill uh, in his uh, guidance. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your valuable guidance. Uh, now, the third session is going to an end. I invite Mr. M. P. Sankamde, sir, for a vote of thanks. I am mostly thankful to the resource person, respected honorable Dr. Ram Raji Mohde, sir, who has accepted our invitation and generously made this session very informative. Sir, I am very thankful to you about your nice talk on 24th century skills, which are required to develop personality and to get success in this modern 21st century world. So uh, I'm also thank for presenting very neat and planned PPT, which is which will be very helpful for our students and others. Uh, thank you once again, sir. And uh, nextly, uh, I am also thankful to Professor DC Kore, sir, introducing this session's resource person. And my sincere thanks also goes to those who are participating in this session. Thank you once again to all of you. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, both sessions will start now here. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Umkar Patak, sir, Department of Physics, to give introductions of uh, respected Dr. E.L. Sun Aushi, sir, Department of English, Mauli Mahavidale, Varala. Mr. Umkar Patak, sir. Thank you, sir. Akkalkot Education Society's CV Khedgi's Maswishwar Science, Raja Vijay Singh Commerce, and Raja Jai Singh Art College. Today's e-seminar sponsored by Punneshlok Ahilya Devi Volkar Solapur University and organized by Department of English, CV Khedgi's College, Akkalkot. National e-seminar on new curriculum of English compulsory BA and BSc third year student. It is my proud privilege to introduce resource person, Dr. Parmeshwar L. Suryanshi, sir. Dr. Suryanshi is the head department of English in Mahuli, Mahuli Mahavidyalaya, Vadala, Solapur. He, is 14, he has 14 years teaching experience to UG classes in Mahuli Mahavidyalaya, Vadala, and one year teaching experience to PG classes in Walchan College, Arts and Science and in Sangmeshwar College, Solapur. He has published 25 research papers in national and international journals. He is research guide for PhD in English. And one research student is working under his guidance. He has completed his PhD in multidimensional thematic concerns in selected novels of Margaret Drabbles from Punneshlok Ahilya Devi Holkar, Solapur University, Solapur, under the guidance of Professor Dr. Miss Annie John. He delivered talks on NAC preparations in various college and various topics as a resource person in national conferences. I hope this is a effect, very effective seminar for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Patak sir. Thank you very much. Now we are uh, very much eager to listen the scholarly sessions on 21st century uh, skills. So I invite respected Dr. P. L. Surunshi sir, Department of English, Mauli Mahavidyalaya, Vadala, for his excellent guidance. The name of the topic: 21st, uh, 21st century skill. Uh, respected 
डॉक्टर ई एल सुरवंशी सर थैंक यू सो मच ऑडियो हाँ हाँ यस सर थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर द कंफर्मेशन सो एट द आउटसेट आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सी बी खेड़ी खेड़गीज कॉलेज for inviting me as the resource person for this national conference i am supposed to talk on the 21st century skills prior to me three batters have batted very well honorable dr dr any john professor mp joshi sir and just before me dr ram raja mote all three have batted very well and i am happy they have set, they have set a winning total so these are the ending overs and i have the liberty i have the license to go after the bowlers so taking forward this liberty i will give justice to the topic i will try my level best to give justice to the topic so here we are supposed to deal with the 21st century skills these 21st century skills are also known as learning skills or transversal skills also the important thing is that when we deal in the academic atmosphere in the academic environment at that time the first question can be asked that what is the center of all activities why we are doing all these things what is the center of all academic activities and we all of us will agree with me that the center of all academic activity is the student student is the nucleus of everything and we have to shape that students so that he shall have the competencies to face the future challenges in the world and in order to make our student competent we should equip our students with some of the skills and these skills will make him competent to live his life quite effectively and he will enjoy his stay he will enjoy his life here in this world and therefore i would like to say that the development of the society and nation go hand in hand with the development of the students or individual and therefore it is very essential that we should make our students competent and we can make our student competent by giving them imparting them certain skills that are necessary in the 21st century as we know that the 21st century has witnessed an era of intense transformation in all areas that is education global trade economy and technology we have observed a phenomenal changes and because of this we had to face a lot of difficulties because we could not we could not abreast keep abreast with the change and if we want to keep abreast with the change then definitely we have to acquire certain skills that are relevant or that are useful in 21st century recently the covid-19 pandemic has thrown new challenges to cope with it has impacted the whole economy of the world it has impacted the whole technology of the world it has impacted the whole life of the world and good thing is that we were half prepared and we were not uh, we were not prepared to that extent 
and because of that the whole humanity has suffered and because of that many damages many setbacks we have faced in this life now let us move to the presentation just hold on i will start my presentation Hope this is visible to you all. Hi, ah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Thank you so much. So, twenty-first century skills. As I told you earlier, that student is the center of all academic activities. And what is most important thing that a person need to excel in career? That is, if you want to excel in the career, then it is necessary. that you must have certain skills and having the skill is not enough you also should have a mastery over that skill then only it is possible that you can excel in your career that today's youth you do remember one thing that i am giving you the piece of advice that don't be a dead dreamer you ma you should have certain skills you should be well equipped with certain skills then only you can expect to get settled in the life without having the mastery on the skill in this 21st century you are not going to get settled in the life and therefore you should have a mastery on certain skills then only it is possible that you can get a good job and you can have everything apart from that we need to keep in mind that we have to put a lot of efforts to enhance the skills skills cannot be acquired easily you have to take a sincere and serious efforts if you take serious and sincere efforts then only it is possible that you can acquire certain skills and therefore i would appeal you that you make conscious efforts to master certain skills then only it is possible you can enjoy your life you know that darwin has proposed a theory and in that theory he has told that survival of the fittest those species will survive here only who are fit in this environment and he that theory we can apply here in 21st century also that if you want to survive in this 21st century then you should be fit in this 21st century to be fit means to have certain skills under your belt to have mastery on certain skills then only it is possible you will be considered fit to live a life in the 21st century if you are not having the skill in 21st century then you are not fit to live you will suffer in this 21st century and therefore you want to be competitive the student should be Com stay competitive and if you want to stay competitive then it is necessary that you should have certain skills then only you can enjoy your stay and you will always remember that the demands of everyday life are increasing and they are changing day by day the demands are not only increasing but they are changing as i told you earlier all of a sudden this virus corona virus came and the life of thousands of people have been affected we were not allowed to come out of the home also we were suffocating each and every moment the reason was that this the threat was created to the life but science how dealt that pandemic very well and now we are breathing a free air so thanks to the science and the researchers who have worked rigorously and continuously on that pandemic so in this way that we how to have certain skills under our belt then only we can sustain so what is the meaning of that 21st century skill 
The meaning is that the glossary of education defines the 21st century skills, refers to the knowledge, life skills, career skills, habits, and traits that are critically important for the students to succeed in today's world. The idea is very simple. What are the skills that are known as the 21st century? That the, there should be, it refers to knowledge, it refers to certain skills, it refers to the skills that will help to set your careers, it, help, it refers to the habits and the traits that are there in the life of a person. And these skills will help the students to survive here in this life. So this is the simple definition that is given by glossary of education. And now let us see what are the skills that we need to have in this 21st century. That we need to have creativity, we need to have flexibility, leadership, initiatives, productivity, critical thinking, communication skill, collaboration, media literacy, technological literacy, information literacy, and social skills. Most of the skills out of these skills have been dealt by my friend, Dr. Mote. So I will be dealing with the specific few of the these skills. So these are the random list. The list is unending. We can give end number of uh, names for the skills that are useful in 21st century. But these are the models that I have presented in front of you. So let us proceed. What is the importance of 21st century skills? Why do we need these skills? What is the importance of having these skills in 21st century? That if we understand the importance of these skills, then only we will realize why to achieve and how to achieve them. So the first important thing is that the changing scenario of higher education. You remember that the scenario of education is changing day by day. The life is changing very fast. As the life changes, the situation in the society changes. And as the situation in the society changes, the education is very close to the society because they are correlated with each other. If the standard of education decreases, society, the standard of living also decreases. And if the standard of education increases, the standard of society also increases. And therefore, I would like to tell you that the changing scenario of higher education has, the, has forced the society to accept and acquire certain skills. If you want to take the education, then you should be techno savvy. As you can take the example, nowadays we are sitting at home, still we are connected. We are sitting at different, different places and still we are connected here. It is just because of the technology. And why we are connected? Because we have that type of literacy that is technological literacy. Because of that, we are connected. And these are the things that sitting at home, we are attending the lectures of the college, lectures of the teachers. The teachers are delivering their lectures, lectures, and we are attending them. The second important thing is that we are preparing our students for the jobs that might not exist, that might not yet exist. The important thing is that we are teaching to our students. The spoon feeding we are doing here in the colleges and the schools also. The reason is that we know that the situation demands such. So it is a teacher who is more worried about the presently of the student in the college than the student. This is a bit difficult to digest, but it is fact. And therefore, if we want to prepare our students for the jobs that he is going to do in the future, then we have to give him everything so that he can compete in the coming age with the coming students. And therefore, it is necessary that we should give him certain skills so that he can sell out his life. And the next important is that we have to equip, equipping the students with the non-set of skills that can prepare them for the unknown. 
we don't know that what situation will come in the future and what our students are supposed to face in the future what challenges they are going to face in the future we don't know so just by in we say by just guess we how to give them we how to make them versatile so that they will be ready to face any situation they will not hesitate they will not run away from the life if they are well equipped, equipped if they are mastered in certain skills then definitely they will ex enjoy their life and therefore we have to give the certain skills then the next point is that social media has changed the human interaction and created new challenges in navigating social situation as you know that we all of us are using social media facebook whatsapp instagram etc etc and this social media has changed the human interactions and because of that the nature of interaction has changed so if we want to interact a person sitting in america then we should have mastery on certain social media applications we should have mastery on social media then only we can have an interactions and therefore it is necessary that we must have certain skills the age of internet has dramatically increased access to knowledge remember one thing that internet has made a global village and because of that it is very important thing that we must be competent to handle all this technology we must be able to handle computer we must be able to handle mobile we must be able to handle each and every technology so that we can interact with other persons and the important thing is that one more importance is that student needs to learn how to process and analyze large amount of information that there is lot of information we are getting information and if we are to understand the information in a proper way then we have to process that information and we have to analyze that information in a proper way then only it is possible that we can get the message from that information and student students need to be taught the application of knowledge to address the complex problems of 21st century this is again one more important thing so that we should make our students competent to solve any problem and as we know that in the future we don't know what type of problems our students are going to face therefore we should make them competent by rendering certain skill by equipping them with certain skills so because of these things we must have to master certain skills that are 21st century skills so what are the types of 21st century skills these skills are divided in three broad areas they are called three ls the first one is called learning skills the second one is called life skills the third one is called literacy skills as you know earlier my friend has dealt with the life skills and literacy skills and here only to deal with the learning skills the learning skills are also known as four c's of 21st century so what are the four c's that the four c's are critical thinking the second c is creativity the third c is collaboration and the fourth c is communication so these are the only skills that i aim to deal with in this my talk so let us proceed and deal with the four c's the first c is communication skill that as you know there are various types of the communication oral communication written communication and non verbal communication in order to success we must have a mastery on the communication if we are master in communication our oral communication should be good our written communication should be good and our non verbal communication should be good if our communication is good then we can get a desired effect we can get a desired effect and when you are communicating i will be very brief just to remember when you are communicating at that time you 
take care that your communication must be clear the seven c's should be observed while communicating so what are the seven c's that the first c is your communication should be clear it should be concise it should be correct it should be complete it should be concrete courteous and coherent these are the seven c's when you are communicating at that time you do take note of these seven c's then only your communication will be effective if you want to make your communication effective then you have to follow these seven c's so that you can get a desired effect so good communication skill in workplace will definitely help you in building the good relationship with your colleagues if you have good communication then definitely uh, uh, the thing is that you can be considered a leader if your communication is not good then you, you will suffer a lot therefore work on your communication skill your oral communication written communication and verbal communication non verbal communication should be good then only you can get a desired effort whether you are sitting in a meeting attending a job interview or emailing a client or having good communication skill is essential you may be at different different places at different different fields but having good communication skill is the need of r and if you are having good communication then definitely you will shine in this 21st century what does communication do it helps getting you getting your views across and being misunderstood the important thing is that it it will not if your communication is good then definitely you will be understood by each and every person it will not be misunderstood but if your communication is not good what you want to convey that should be clear to others then only it is possible that what you want to tell it is important thing it helps in getting the dream job or missing out if your communication is good then it will help you getting the good job and the important thing is that it helps for building strong and positive work working relationship remember that you should have mastery on your communication if you are having mastery on your communication then definitely you can have a strong relationship with your colleagues helps avoiding misunderstanding the people will not misunderstood you if you your communication is good so these are the important things and these are the benefits of having good communication now let us move to as we are running short of time so i am uh, going a little bit fast but i will definitely try to give the just to each and every topic the next important thing is the next c is critical thinking critical thinking is very important thing in life if you are a critical thinker then you will reach at your destination thinking itself is a skill you remember the two persons will not think about a particular situation same they will think differently and differently the reason is that the knowledge that we are having matters for the thinking and therefore critical thinking is very much important in the person's life so your critical thinking this skill can be developed in you and in order to develop this thing you have to read a lot you should gain a lot of knowledge then the thinking will be in a proper way students are increasingly so dependent on the internet internet for their information and uh, i would um, aware you i would make you aware that the whatever information is there on the internet is not authentic and not trustworthy you have to assess each and every information and then only you have to accept accept that information and therefore as we are having lot of information we should be critical about the information and critical thinking is the systematic evaluation of the arguments of others what is critical thinking the critical thinking is a systematic evaluation you have to evaluate each and every thing every argument of others then only you should accept that and the important thinking uh, the important thing is that critical thinking generates the question if the questions are not generated in your mind you should ask question you should always think why it is like this if you are 
asking these questions to yourself then only you will get the answer to that question so the important thing is that you be critical and you you should assess that and then only you should accept that it evaluates the information and arguments what does critical thinking do critical thinking evaluates the information and arguments it means that some people have the habits and we have the habits that whatever others say we accept that passively we don't apply our thinking capacity we have to apply our thinking capacity and then only we have to think whether the particular argument is correct or incorrect correct in the given situation if we feel correct it is okay if we feel incorrect then we should strongly object that saying that it is incorrect it helps to solve the problem that if you are having critically empowered that critical thinking helps to solve the problem because it will bring forth the various dimensions of the problems it will give the solution to that problem and therefore you must have critical thinking and students are increasingly so dependent on the internet as i told you that you are so much dependent on the internet and whatever internet provides we should not be we should not accept that each and everything that is important thing and therefore critical thinking is important critical thinking helps us to solve various problems that is the importance of this critical thinking the next c is creativity creativity and innovations just to remember that 21st century will value the person who has got the creativity 21st century will value the person who has got the innovations if we are running with the crowd nobody will take the note we should have our own way we should have something unique in ourselves if we are having something unique if we are having the creativity and that creativity will give you everything that creativity will earn the bread and butter for you in the 21st century and this is the big question that earning bread and bread butter is a big question in 21st century and you have to concentrate on that and therefore you should be creative what does creativity do creativity engages the mind it makes processing learning more efficient that creativity makes learning more efficient creativity enables alternative ways of thinking that this is important thing that creativity enables alternative ways of thinking it means that it is as i told you that thinking itself is a skill if you think in a creative way if you think in a creative way then there the creativity is helping you or you are having that skill of creativity it unblocks old patterns or habits of thinking this is an important thing what does creativity do creativity unblocks the old patterns or habits of thinking and creativity connects us to ourselves therefore it is important thing that as you know this creativity connects us with our passions creativity builds intercultural connections creativity nurtures confidence creativity instills curiosity and it encourages questions these are the important things that creativity does and therefore creativity is very important in our life and if you want to be creative then you should keep yourselves busy you should keep yourselves asking questions creativity is participatory and interactive activity if you are creative then definitely you will participate and you will interact with various persons and the important thing is that creativity stimulates and motivates the important as i told you that creativity stimulates and motivates that why does the painter paints the picture one after another the reason is that it stimulates and it motivates and he gets interest in all these things and because of that he is painting one picture after another picture or he is doing one thing after another thing 
creativity keeps the mind active this is an important thing that if you are active if your mind is active then understand that you are creative just creative is not something that is rocket science as i told you that creativity is a very simple idea mopping the floor in our home in a creative way is also a skill that all girls and some of the boys must be mopping the floor but if you mop that in a proper way if you mop that in a clean way then that can be creativity for yourselves creativity broadens our perspective and can help us overcome prejudices this is an important thing that what does creativity do creativity broadens our perspective it broadens our understanding and help us overcome prejudices that because of this creative attitude or creative thinking our prejudices are put aside and creativity inspires collective thinking as i told you earlier that creativity matters a lot in the life of a person if you are creative then your life you will enjoy your life you will have a lot of fun your life will be joyful and therefore creativity nurtures idea different different ideas are born in your mind the reason is that creativity nurtures the ideas and creativity supports resilience creativity supports the resilience you will be more resilient to the challenges that are there in the life and therefore this creativity helps you to be more resilient now we are moving to the next to see that is collaboration what is the meaning of collaboration collaboration is the ability to share ideas and thoughts alongside with the another person to achieve a shared objective it is an ability to work together the important thing is the simplification is that collaboration is an ability to work together if you are comfortable in working with others then you remember that you are having this skill of collaboration we should help other and the other should be able to help us or other should be eager to help us and if we can match the rapo with others then you are having the skill of collaboration but you have to work on that and you have to develop this skill of collaboration collaboration is about combining different areas of thoughts notions beliefs theories into a concrete solution what well, how does collaboration helps you collaboration helps you to offer a solution to a problem that is created in front of you and therefore remember one thing that collaboration is a need of our in 21st century so collaboration has many synonyms such as a teamwork a cooperation a coordination and they all refer to the ability to work with at least one another person towards the desired goal which can be done effectively on one's own this is an important thing that working with other the person is called collaboration and if you are able to do that then remember that you are you are having that skill collaboration is the crucial skill to master for human to survive and grow remember this is an important thing that you should have a mastery on this skill collaboration skill is believed to be a key factor for both social and economic development as i told you that we live in the society and society will evolve society will develop if we are giving hands to one another and collaboration is nothing but giving hand to the one another taking the help of others and giving our help to the another person is called collaboration and that definitely will help in developing the society in developing the nation and in developing the world therefore we must develop this skill in our life so what are the benefits of collaboration the collaboration will improve your performance the research has so shown that the collaborative methods are much more valuable than the other methods and if you are working in collaboration with another 
agency or another person, then your performance will definitely improve. Then the second benefit is that embedded learning. Collaboration embeds knowledge more powerfully through listening and sharing. That this helps to embed the knowledge of a person and therefore collaboration is important. Collaboration builds the confidence. The confidence building is very important if we, if we are having a confidence, then every work we can do will be effective. And if we are collaborating with others, then that will be very important thing. And therefore it is necessary that we must collaborate with others. Then the next benefit is that improved psychological health. The collaboration will improve your psychological health. Just as I told you just now that we human being is a social animal. Man is a social animal. Why we live in a society? The reason is that we can't live alone. And because of that, if we are in the company of our friend, if we are in the company of other people, then we feel comfortable in the same way if we comfortable, if we collaborate with others, then we feel good and that will help us to improve the psychological health. Then the next benefit is that inclusivity, effective collaboration recognizes the merit of everyone in the group. Though we are participating in the group, but what talent you are having that can be identified by the, collab the act of collaboration and well-rounded citizen that collaborative practice can become so inculcated in a person that they take their skills not only on the further education and work, but in their personal lives too. So these are the benefits of the skill. And therefore, it is necessary that we must have the skill of collaboration. So with this, I come to the conclusion of my presentation. I would like to thank to the all participants for participating and listening to me patiently. If you are having any queries, any doubts, then I am here to answer your queries. So it is over to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It is over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your excellent guidance about 21st uh, century skill. Uh, now the fourth session is going to an uh, end. I invite uh, Mr. M.T. Sunkamle, sir, for your vote of thanks. First of all, I would like to thank fourth session resource person, respected Dr. P. I. Suryamshi, sir, Department of English, Mauli Mahavidyalaya, Badala. Sir, I am most thankful to you giving us valuable information and knowledge about 21st century skills and how to acquire and master certain skills and how these skills are important to survive in this modern world. Sir, you explained very well in detail and once again I extend uh, very thankful to you for insightful talk and thank you for your kind presence here. Uh, again, I also like to offer my sincere thanks to Professor Patek sir for introducing this session's uh, resource person. Once again, uh, I also like to thank to all these participants. And with this, the fourth session comes to an end here. Thank you. OK. Uh, OK, thank you, sir. Punish Lok, Ahila Devi Holkar, Solapur University, Solapur, sponsored. Department of English, CP Kirgiz, Vashish Science, Rajiv J.C. Commerce, Rajiv J.C. Arts College, Takkalpur. Today has organized a national level e-seminar on new curriculum of English compulsory B and BSc 3 here. Now we come in the valedictory function. First of all, I would like to uh, welcome your chairman, Professor Annie John Mam, and all viewers members. And then I would like to uh, welcome uh, validatory function function she placed professor santosh koti sir uh, principal walchand college of arts and uh, science solapur and then i would like to uh, welcome uh, validatory functions president 
डॉक्टर प्रोफेसर एस सी एडिट सर एच ओडी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोग्राफी सिविल सर्विस कॉलेज ऑफ कुलकोच and then i would like to welcome all resource persons uh, of this uh, seminar then i would like to uh, welcome uh, respected vijay andare sir uh, in charge principal of civic kirgis college akkal coach all heads of departments participants and diligence teachers and students so once again i would like to welcome uh, one and all uh, in this uh, validatory function uh, now i would like to uh, request wait only 2 uh, minute kote sir uh, will be joined within a 2 minute Uh, in this validatory functions uh, i would like to welcome chief guest professor uh, santosh koti sir principal walchan college of arts and science solapur uh, now i would like to uh, request respected dr i am kharidi sir uh, department of english to welcome and for all review of the seminar dr i am kharidi sir Hello. Hello. Good afternoon to one and all dignitaries, HODs of departments of English, faculty members of all colleges, PhD students, and participated students of all colleges. It is a, indeed a great pleasure for me to present a brief review of deliberation of national conference. national level e seminar that we have organized today i welcome all for the validatory function first of all i welcome dr santosh koti sir principal walchand college of arts and science solapur as a chief guest for the validatory function i also welcome professor sc advitot sir hod department of geography cb khedgi college akkalkot as a president of today's validatory function of national level e seminar on new curriculum of english compulsory ba bsc third year the seminar is sponsored by punya shlok ahilya devi holkar solapur university solapur and it is organized by the department of english cb khedgi college akkalkot 
on 4th February 2022. Now here I present a brief review of today's deliberations of national level e-seminar. First of all, Professor Basaraj Donur, Registrar, Central University of Karnataka, Kalburgi, inaugurated the seminar. As the inaugurator of the seminar, he talked on the subject, importance of communication skills in 21st century. He had given many examples related to be perfect in communication skill. This skill is the most important skill and its demand is increasing day by day in job market. Because of the acquiring of this skill, we impress others and put our long lasting effects on others. It is the need of an hour to acquire it. He said, success has not shortcut, but with hard work, we get it. With communication only, we put across our ideas. Man must show wisdom, sympathy, empathy, commitment at workplace. With good communication, we made bond and relations with others. Also, he talked and guided on many subjects related to become a good communicator. The president of the inaugural function was Mr. Vijay Andare, in charge principal of CB Khedigi College, also highlighted the need of the various skills to acquire the students or by the students. He also highlighted the importance of communication skill in today's world. He has also mentioned that teachers of English subjects are trying their best at their levels in their classes to put various skills in the lives of students. After the inaugural session, technical sessions started. In the first technical session, Professor Dr. Annie John, Madam, BUS Chairman, English and uh, HOD of Department of English, A.R. Burla Mahila Varishta Mahavidyala Sulapur, talked on the subject teaching poetry. She talked in detail about the poems prescribed for same five. Uh, the names are as follows. The Solitary Reapers by William Wordsworth, The Queen's Rival by Sarojini Naidu, The Village Schoolmaster by Oliver Goldsmith, and The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. And the same six poems like Sita by Torudat, my Last Duchess, Robert Browning, Ode to Beauty, John Kitts, and Last Life, Charlotte Bronte. She highlighted summary of these poems, gave all details of the prescribed poems in a very lucid way. Her talk on the poems was very much useful for teachers as well as for students to understand the poems. She talked on objectives of poems, values of poems, creativity, imagination, and while reading, we have to focus on many things also, like language, skills, then uh, words. And uh, she talked, say, that the poem is the medium that where the minimum words can get, uh, uh, create maximum effects and the sounds and pattern of poems. In the second technical session, Professor Dr. M.P. Joshi, Head of Department of English, Walsham College of Arts and Science, Solapur, talked on teaching prose. He talked in detail about the prose prescribed for Sem Fayu. These are the gifts of the Maggie by O. Henry and the Homecoming by Rabindna Tagore. And the prose for the Sem Sixth, um, that is uh, Growing Up, Joy Scary, and God Sees the Truth but Waits by Leo Tolstoy. He gave all the details about the lessons, writers, characters, and the stories prescribed for the syllabus. He talked about what is fiction, narration, short stories, elements of short stories like plot, character, setting, conflict, theme, diction, and the importance of stories, title. In the third session, technical session, Dr. <coughs> Ram Raja Mote, HOD of English. So, Swarnalata Mahavidyala Vairag talked on communication skills that are prescribed for Sem 6 in English compulsory paper. He focused his talks on literacy skill, life skills, and other skills. He also guided in a detailed manner on the above skills and talked on the importance of it in moldering careers. He gave many examples related to it. 
and in the fourth technical session dr p l surevanshi head of department of english mauli mahavidyalaya wadala talked on 21st century skills described for sem 6 he talked on a detailed on 21st century skills types of 21st century skills and learning skills he guided us all on various skills needful to acquire by all and particularly by students his talk was very useful to all teachers while teaching in class and i am hopeful that students also understood its importance respected all i would like to tell you that all sessions of the today's seminar were good organized and all resource persons talk persons talk was very informative and fruitful and it was related to the new curriculum of english compulsory of ba bsc third year the syllabus which is now implemented from june 20 2021 from sem 5 the test book for the third year english compulsory the title is literary mind scapes one is published by macmillan publishers as per the guidelines this is a brief report of today's sessions thankful to all for patience listening here i conclude the review report thank you very much thank you very much <coughs> thank you very much sir uh, now i would like to invite uh, mr mp sunkamri sir to give the introductions of chief guest professor santosh kopi sir principal walchand college of arts and science solapur mr mt sunkamri sir shlok ahila devi holkar solapur university solapur sponsored department of english sidi khedgi college akkalkot organized a national level e seminar on new curriculum of english compulsory ba and bsc third year so we have received a chief guest for this uh, seminar dr santosh kuti sir i am going to give his introduction Uh, he is one of the eminent dynamic stalwart uh, veteraner and respected honorable and best english speaker dr santosh kuti sir is and he is born in solapur dr kuti sir has completed his graduation from sangmeshwar college solapur and post graduation from shivaji university kolhapur where he stood first in the university examinations and received gold medal by the auspicious hands of dr apj abdul kalam he also qualified set and net examination and started his career as a lecturer in english at kranti kranti grani g d bapu lad college kundal district sangli also worked as associate professor in english at walchand college of arts and science solapur from march 2016 to september 2018 he has worked as principal hirachand namchand college of commerce solapur he has pursued pg dte from english and foreign languages university hyderabad and phd on the concept of nativism in indian and african literary criticism from shivaji university kolhapur during his doctoral research he visited south africa present presented a paper in golden jubilee international conference of english academy of southern africa at cape peninsula university of technology cape town he has completed two minor research projects entitled the concept of nativism in indian and african literary criticism and a study of maharashtra government's policy to introduce english from first standard in non english medium schools in maharashtra with special focus on solapur city funded by ugc new delhi with amount of rupee 70000 each he has presented research papers in various national and international journals and had been invited as a research person at national international conferences and at refreshers courses in collaboration with dr ashok babar he has published two books first two versions of nativism and second book the indian nativism from september 2018 he is working as a principal of walchand college of arts and science solapur he is 
मेंबर ऑफ सिने एंड मैनेजमेंट काउंसिल पुण्य श्लोक अहिला देवी होलकर सोलापुर यूनिवर्सिटी सोलापुर एंड सेक्रेटरी महर्षि विठ्ठल रामजी शिंदे प्रतिष्ठान सोलापुर सो सच अ बिग एंड ग्रेट पर्सनैलिटी वी हैव एंड थैंक यू हियर ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर नाउ फीडबैक फ्रॉम द पार्टिसिपेंट्स इन दिस सेमिनार देयर आर थ्री पार्टिसिपेंट गिव देयर नेम और देयर ओपिनियन Uh, first of all i would like to uh, invite uh, revanshit halluli sir to give your feedback and uh, give your opinion about this seminar uh, mr revanshit halluli sir सेकंड पार्टिसिपेंट कमलाकर रुगे कमलाकर रुगे थर्ड वन इज अवेलेबल मिस भाग्यश्री पाटिल भाग्यश्री पाटिल is there anyone ready to give your opinion about this seminar you can give your opinion ha uh, respected revanshit halluli sir ha uh, good evening sir uh, good good evening honorable dignitaries and uh, all uh, research as well as students and teachers and my friends so today's session uh, from keynote speaker to last session it was really wonderful so we enjoyed lot and uh, even we understood everything each and everything so from uh, professor uh, donur sir professor anijon ma'am then professor joshi sir and then professor mote sir and then dr uh, parmeshwar surunshi sir all of them have highlighted each and every concept so there is no doubt and according to my opinion uh, it was really fruitful we enjoyed lot and uh, it will be too much benefit for the uh, students of cy bsc ba etc and uh, so i would like to thank once again to the organizer and uh, department of english cb kirgis college akalkot and the whole team of that committee thank you so much for giving me a chance thank you okay thank you sir now i would like to uh, invite miss bagesri patil madam bagesri patil madam कमलाकर रोगे सर इज देर एनी वन वॉन्ट टू गिव युअर फीडबैक अबाउट दिस सेमिनार सो यू कैन गिव मड्डी मैडम i want your feedback if you are ready to give then please give it madhi madam hello kori sir hello kori sir शेख मैडम ओके इट्स ओके सर नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट टुडे वैलिडेटरी चीफ गेस्ट प्रोफेसर संतोष कोटी सर प्रिंसिपल 
uh, Walton College of Arts and Science, Solapur, to give your uh, valuable guidance of today's calendrical function. Professor Santosh Joshi, sir. Santosh Koti, sir. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Honorable Principal, uh, Dr. Andhari, Chief Guest, uh, Ch sorry, President of this uh, validatory session, and my friend, Dr. Adivitoti, sir, Dr. Kherdi, all other faculty members of Kherdi College, other participants, and dear students. From the deliberations that I came to know about this seminar since morning, all the sessions that had been conducted and the resource persons that have spoken on the topics that have been given here on the syllabus of BA and BSc part three. I have come to know about the effectiveness and success of this e-seminar that has been organized by the college. Really, I'm confident that whatever topics have been given to the resource person, they have given justice to it. And the names of the resource person itself suggest and show that how much successful this e-seminar is. The syllabus, we say new syllabus to the, that has been prescribed to the students, but really we the teachers of English literature, when we see the syllabus, we find that it's quite interesting because the prose section, poetry section and the prescribed prose and poems really are much interesting. They create interest among the students about prose and poetry. The gift of Mejai, the story by O. Henry is really wonderful. I like it very much. O. Henry's speciality is that there is a sudden change, turn at the end of the story. We wait what will happen. Because Dela has sold her hair and she is waiting to offer the gift to Jim. And we expect that something that Dela, when Jim arrives, Dela will give, give, offer the gift to Jim. But at the end, different happens. It is Jim who offers Dela the gift. And then we come to know that the same situation might have been uh, experienced by Jim also. Both the husband and the wife, they are experiencing the same situation. And the turn at the end, we come to know that how Jim had brought the gift for Della. Ravindra Sahitya homecoming, that is also wonderful. It is not just a story of a boy, Pratik Chakravarti. It is the story of a boy who is 14 years of age, youthful, not only mischievous, but full of energy. That energy need to be diverted in a proper way. A proper channel need to be given to the energy. Tagore has Put it in a different way. Though the social problem is there, he has become successful in showing that the youth has to be, or the energy of these boys need to be addressed in a proper way. Wordsworth's poems, Solitary Reaper, or The Daffodils, both are best examples of his poems which express his definition of poetry 
And if you see the grammar, active, passive, voice, or phrasal verbs, or similarly, you have adverbials and direct indirects. Now, though outwardly we feel that there is nothing much in, in this syllabus, but compared to the students of BSc and compared to the students of BA, we feel that or we experience that much need to be taught to the students of arts faculty. Because the students who come from uh, or who have Marathi background are the non-English medium students. They need to be taken much care. So as a teachers of English, we have to concentrate more on grammar and vocabulary and 21st century skills. Because students of BSc or science faculty, they have a bit background of English language. Many of the students, they have studied from English medium schools. But the students who come for BA or take admission in arts faculty, maximum students, they come from uh, or they get education from their mother tongue. So the medium of instruction is either Marathi or in some areas, English or Urdu. Depending on that, we have to concentrate on these students. So this component, which has been included in the syllabus, grammar and vocabulary and 21st century skills, these two components are the best that can improve the language of our students. So the, the BOS has taken proper care while preparing this syllabus. They have paid much attention for the development of the students. So deliberations have been made on these topics. But I thank the Board of Studies of Punishlok Ahilya Devi Kolkar Solapur University Solapur that they have paid special attention on the development of the students. What component need to be incorporated in the syllabus so that there will be overall development of the students. So that care has been taken by the uh, syllabus committee, board of studies. I appreciate their efforts. Similarly, the college has also taken care and organized this e-seminar today and tried to give deliberations on the topics that have been prescribed in the syllabus. All the resource persons, they have also, uh, since morning, I have heard from Dr. Khairdi through his report that all the resource persons have also deliberated on the topic. And obviously, this seminar has become a great success. I thank the college that they have taken this initiative. and. Uh, organize this seminar, the uh, attempt is appreciable. I thank the organizers that they have given me the opportunity to express my views with you. Though the time is not much here, because already since morning, all of you are uh, taking great efforts and it's almost three o'clock. So uh, all the participants are waiting for lunch. So it is possible that now nowadays it has become much easy that you can just put your camera off and you can continue your activities. So that uh, will not be a hurdle here. But when we used to organize regular seminars in the college, it was much difficult for the speaker also to speak in a final session because all are waiting to uh, when the session will be over and will rush for the lunch. But now this facility through online has made it easy. Okay? So I thank once again the organizers that they have given me the opportunity uh, to share my views. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very, very much, sir. Now I would like to invite the validatory functions president, uh, Professor S.C. Adithot, HOD, Department of Geography, to give the presidential remark. Dr. S.C. Adutote, sir. 
May I audible, Chandan sir? Ah, yes sir, yes sir. May I audible? Okay. Good afternoon to one and all, and particular to Dr. Santosh Koti sir, Principal of Palchan College of Arts and Science. There must be a technical problem. He might have logged out. Uh, just check it. Uh, wait only two minutes. Okay, sir. Uh, audible, sir? Can you, sir? Ha, sir. Ha, yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, due to technical problem. So, uh, I am I am talking about uh, the curriculum which is framed for the both faculty students, arts and science. It is well appreciated by all the uh, speakers. And I am also congratulate the chairman, Annie Joan, madam, and all BOS committee members. Uh, they are framed uh, such a type, such a syllabus which gives the basic foundation to the uh, students of our university. So one worry is for my side is the shortcut methods are uh, nowadays uh, students are using while they are uh, chatting on message on WhatsApp. They are uh, always uh, making shortcuts. It is uh, not too much good practice from student point of view. So it is my humble request to all students to go through the literature given by various scholars, R.K. Narayan, then Burton Russell, John Milton, Shakespeare, Ravinda Tagore, n number of writers have given various basic things to us. Please go through the literature, then only uh, communication is possible. Then uh, Dr. Koti sir is also pointed out about the grammar side, which is basic one. Without understanding 12 types of grammar, it is not possible to communicate properly and effectively. And nowadays, uh, globalization era, market is asking about your competence in communication skill. So. I am very happy to share my views on this occasion. And I'm thankful to organizer, Professor S.M. Paranjapai, Madam, Dr. I am Khairadi, sir, and all his committee members by giving me an opportunity to, to share my views on this faculty function. Thank you, one and all. Thanks, sir. Uh, Over to you, Chandan, sir. OK, OK, thank you very much, sir. Uh, now the today's e seminar is going to an end. So I invite Dr. Ayan Kharidi, sir, convener of the seminar.
और वो वोट ऑफ थैंक्स now we are or in the last stage of today's national level e seminar on new curriculum of english compulsory ba bsc third year in the the seminar is sponsored by punyashlok ailya devi holkar solapur university solapur and organized by department of english cb khedgi college akalpur first of all i am thankful to the vice chancellor of punyashlok ailya devi holkar solapur university Dr. Fadnavis, Madam, for giving an opportunity to my college to organize the seminar by sponsoring it. Then I am very much thankful to Pro Vice Chancellor and Registrar for the uh, of the university and also all the competent authorities of it for their help in organization. The seminar. Uh, <clears throat> then I am grateful to Sri Shiv Sharanji Kheri, Chairman Akalpur Education Society, the Vice Chairman Sri Ashok Harpurji. and shri dharne saheb secretary of akalpur education society and also all the directors of it chairman saheb guided helped and motivated us in organizing the seminar i am also grateful to professor any john chairman board of studies in english and all bos members for their support help and suggestions i am thankful to professor basuraj donur sir registrar central university of karnataka Alburgi has inaugurated today's seminar and guided us. I am very much thankful to all resource persons, namely Professor Annie John, Professor M P Joshi, Dr. Ramraj Mote, and Dr. P L Suryanshi sir for their discussions on the new syllabus of English compulsory. I am very much thankful to Professor G S Dawale, acting principal, who inspired us for the organization of the seminar. I am grateful to Mr. Vijay Andar Andare, sir, in charge principal for his suggestions, help, and guidance. I am also grateful to the chief guest of valedictory function, Dr. Santosh Koti, principal, Walchand College of Arts and Science, Solapur, and the president, Professor Dr. S. C. Advitot, H. O. D. Department of Geography, for their being with us and for their guidance. i'm thankful to macmillan publication who brought out the test book of english compulsory of ba bsc third year i'm very much thankful to all hods of department of english of all colleges faculty members of english phd students and participated students of all colleges we have got an overwhelming response from all sides i'm thankful to the local organizing committee members mrs j r birazdar dr a s shinde dr c d kamde dr v h wagmare uh, mr d c kore mr onkar patak sir mr madhu uh, dr madhura guru and mr a m deshmukh and mr a p surwase who helped technically in the organization of the seminar without the support it is without the support of uh, surwase sir and uh, deshmukh sir it is impossible to organize online seminar so i am very much grateful to uh, both of them i am grateful to uh, mrs s m paranj pe hod of department of english cb khedgi college who helped me a lot in all work of organization also thankful to mr chandan son kamle for his anchoring skills and help and thankful to mr m t son kamle our fellow department teachers in the end i am grateful to all faculty members of my college non teaching staff administrative staff for their timely help and to all of and to all those helped be directly or indirectly in the organization of today's seminar thanks one and all for their support and help thank you very much thanks okay thank you all of you Uh, uh, so feedback form uh, link will be sent on uh, each email uh, group. Uh, you can uh, submit your feedback form, and it will automatically get your certificate on your Gmail ID. Okay, thank you all of you.
Hello, sir.